Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block, get that hitter, baby. Today's guests are two comedians who have just broken back into performing live stand-up comedy. That's right, this weekend, they were in Oklahoma City and Salt Lake City. And um, and I'm just really curious as to what their, what their experience was like. We have uh, comedian Brad Williams and comedian Jeff Dye. Because you're definitely, I remember the first time I ever met you, Brad. It was like, I was at USC. I don't know what I was doing, not learning. I was there just as like an outsider. And uh, yeah, it was, and you came up on a motorbike. Yeah. Like a small motorbike, dude. Yeah. And I'd never seen anything like this. Like, you I know, that bike. where I was growing up, they had one man who was kind of a smaller man that did um, mechanic work. <laughs> you know makes sense and he uh you get in there yeah, yeah exactly a, yeah oh yeah i remember they would and sometimes strong. open the hood put him under there oh. and then close the hood <laughs> and he'd fix it while people were driving <laughs> no just so no. just oh he would be in there Hand like and he would candle. hide <laughs> what he drive. would do a lot of hiding i'm gonna hide you know which i think you know i don't <laughs> that's know an advantage yeah <laughs> but um but yeah man i remember and then you pulled up at a pretty good clip of speed and i was like oh my god i'm in another <laughs> I had like just gotten into Los Angeles. I'm like, I'm in another world. Well, you know that Scare Tactics totally show that you that. mentioned. Uh, like, they basically every prank involved a little person. Yeah, yeah. they're and like, oh, she's afraid of teddy bears. What if we put uh, what if we put Brad in this teddy bear? <laughs> nah, we'll make him run around and make him act like a teddy bear at first, but then he'll run around. Yeah, like yeah. that's good. And then the next one's like some lab where it's a giant rat, and they're like, yeah, oh, put Brad in a giant rat costume. <laughs> rat monster. It's I like remember that everything prank. is based around a little person, but yeah. he, the guy not got no glory. Yeah, yeah. and I, I I totally remember that because that uh. Ray, uh, Razor Scooter uh, released these electric scooters back in the day, at, but like they they had one that was looked really cheesy, and then they had one that looked like a like a West Coast chopper. Yeah, and I'm like, all these other kids around USC get to class on a bike. I'm riding my West Coast chopper Razor Scooter, so I, so I would roll. It was up insane. The class. I'd never seen anything like it. I didn't oh, know the school. laws. Yeah, at school because I was going there. I went to USC. Yeah. Oh my god! So gosh. like, uh, yeah, and I, I, I think, yeah, I booked you for like a comedy show on campus or something. Dude, you must oh. have been a legend. You were like, how many doors you, you went to UFC? Uh, you, you USC? at UFC? Well, I don't know where you went. You, I'm not good with schools and letters. <laughs> yeah, and stuff. yeah, it was a uh, dwarf UFC happened in a ball pit <laughs> it at Chuck E. Awesome, Cheese. <laughs> it was so dude, crazy. don't start something that's gonna be huge. <laughs> uh, no, uh, it was. No, it was me, and then there was a teacher there. Oh, okay. And everyone thought I was his kid. Right. Like, oh, er, wow. er, 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 that's how dumb people are about yeah. dwarfs. They must be related. Yeah. yeah. Everyone thought that, like, that's how I got in. Is it, it, It's that, oh, well, your dad works at USC, so that's how you got in. It's like, no, I got in. It's because they needed something. They need someone for the pamphlet. Yeah. Do you? <laughs> also, I have a regular brain and I'm a regular person. <laughs> they think there must be something. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he, yeah, he, yeah, he got in because he cast a spell on the president. Uh, uh, yeah. Dude, I've always th <laughs> wondered, like, do you, like, you know, is it okay to talk about being if somebody is a small person or smaller sure. or a little sure. bit different? Sure. Um, but what I'm thinking is like sometimes I'll see like you know they have LGBTQ community. Yeah. But they don't factor in like uh, but little people don't get factored into that. Well, 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 that's the LPA community. It, oh, the, little people of America. Okay. That, that's not even a joke. It's uh, it, it's uh, it's yeah LPA which, which was started by Billy Barty. Uh, the actor, and then actually when they started, they were called Midgets of America. You pull the picture. And they changed it, and then they changed it. So that's why, yeah, there it is. So uh, that, so that when, yeah, when they started it, it was called oh, Midgets yeah, this of guy America. Was killed it, man. This oh, guy was wow. in everything. You yeah. That guy? So wait, so this guy started the LPA. Yep. And so yeah, so there's a lot of dwarves that have boned each other because of this man. Oh, nice, because man. he started LPA. Oh, because then it's a place to meet yeah. other people yeah. that are smaller. Services, dude. Thank we you, thank, thank you for what you did. There's been without a lot of this families. guy, we wouldn't have all those shitty shows on TLC, <laughs> which were some of my favorite shows way, too. <laughs> I, I hate show those shows on TLC. On TLC. <laughs> really? The, yeah, they're like, we're a family of little people. You're like, I don't give a shit. The, and they literally like, aren't we're just like everyone else. You're like, then why am I watching it? Yeah. <laughs> if you're just like everyone else, then why is this? Why? What? But that one Admit family. Admit you're little, man. 
Yeah, little, little people, big world. Yeah, yeah. I hate them. I Dude, loved them. Why? No, not me. Bro, the sister was fine, bro. Why is the dad? I mean, when she was older, sitting in the tall dude's lap. It, like it looks like the dad <laughs> yeah, that's is disrespectful. In that photo, it looks like the dad is sitting in the tall dude's lap. I hate lap. these shows. I hate these kind of shows. Yeah, well, what fascinated about me about this show, I remember specifically, was they ran a pumpkin ranch. Yeah, and the fact in, in my Portland. mind yeah it blew my mind that you had small people growing the largest vegetable yeah. I remember I used to do I, I used to do jokes about it yeah, I was pumpkins like pumpkins are big squash <laughs> they're just lugging it around like ants bro that's a, like think of it like yeah that yeah th th I mean oh there you go it would it, it would make way more sense that they're like oh uh, they have a strawberry patch yeah like let me hustle yeah cherries. cherries makes sense let me hustle these kumquats, kumquats. <laughs> that's where I was gonna go um yeah, there's like but, no, we no, we got pumpkins, baby tomatoes, we're just but overachievers. I love it. Do you sometimes? But uh, sometimes, do you ever look at like a gay person or mm -hmm. a a diverse person, a black person, a, mm -hmm. maybe a Vietnamese, maybe oh, this is um, be a fun question for me to answer. Let's go. And does it ever? But you know <laughs> what I'm talking about. I know, but I just love you're searching for uh, words to feel <laughs> like okay. Black, <laughs> Filipino, uh, you know, people like. You know, uh, <laughs> but do you know when I'm talking about unique friends, I'll call yeah, them. Tread lightly. Hey, man, <laughs> we're only white guys. What, but he's, <laughs> we don't got a thing. Yeah. But is there camaraderie there? Like if you see, like if you're walking down the street, like in like a white neighborhood and there's a uh -huh. black guy and he's walking down the street, is there camaraderie if you guys see each other kind of? Oh, between like me and a black guy? Yeah. No, but I will say this. <laughs> uh, there's not that instant, uh, there, there, there isn't that instant camaraderie, but I, I, I used to do a bit about this, and it's real. Like, I would loved how black people would react to seeing dwarves. Oh, really? Like, it, it was never totally just... different? Yeah. It was never just like, there's a person. And like, it, it was never that. It was like, oh, shit, little man. Like, it, <laughs> that's my guy. <laughs> like, they, they dab you up. Always that's my like, guy. Always, like, insanely friendly, oh. but yet kind of insulting. You know, it, it's right. like, oh, what up, big man? It's like, why would you say big man to me? That is... Like, what, do you see a guy in a wheelchair and just be like, yo, legs, what's going on? Like, <laughs> But also, it does feel kind of good because you're like, this black guy's being really nice to me, but also yeah. I should get mad at him for doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and then like, like <laughs> there was one time it was... Yo, legs. <laughs> yeah. What up, big man? <laughs> it was back when I was at USC. That hurts and... me, man, that they do that. <clears throat> I always found it funny. I was, uh, I, I was at USC... And then I was on the street where all the fraternities are. It's called it's called the row. It's where all of, uh, fraternity and sorority rows are. And I was with a few of my friends, and like a group of black guys came up to me and my buddies and just started like like aggressively, positively complimenting me, but then calling on me life. the N word. But oh, like, yeah. and then like mm. one of my friends got jealous. He's like, "What? I'm not a." And right. and, and, and 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 they all looked at him like, "No." <laughs> like, like hell no now, so we're, you don't we're cool with the little one yeah 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 i got a pass so you don't so you get so there's times where you get an n-word pass I, I, like not to say it but i get called it and, right and, and you get now, to be one yeah <laughs> wow you're really in but yeah that's crazy yeah so so there, there's not like now if i walk down the street and i see another person who has some kind of disability either they're in a chair or a or an, another dwarf then I, then we give each other like a nod like what's up you, okay you know the struggle i love but that. so <laughs> but it, but but that kind of stops there it doesn't go into like because yeah i always wondered like if you see a black guy and they're in yeah. like a play like because you know a lot of black people feel like outliers kind of right. you know in the in the u.s and so i was wondering like but they don't do that with each other either. it's not like black people nod at like uh, Puerto Ricans or Vietnamese or like you know what I'm saying I don't know I don't think that they do that that doesn't cross borders like lesbians aren't like what's up black guy like this has all... been three white guys discuss race well. <laughs> but, I don't, but I don't think they do that but with we're each just other. wondering I don't know you're the closest thing we have to a black guy right now you know what I'm saying not enough uh, you know I enough. the ass for it yeah it wait so when large. you're in Texas with the guys that you went to like high school with and stuff and you guys are just it's just you guys back home you, do you guys give each other n-word passes oh that's a good point I mean people <laughs> use it a lot more <laughs> I don't think anybody's giving passes, though. You I guys mean, look, just give it to each other? I think, I think people definitely maybe stole a packet like, of passes. Here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yo, look what I got these passes we can use while we're at home tonight. Just us. I think people, somebody definitely stole a packet of passes from the principal's office. Where'd you get that? Oh, uh, man, they're everywhere in Texas. Uh, man, I, like, uh, I, I just remember Ralphie May would always just say it and not care like he would say it because he, he was at it. a weight i feel like he was like a kind of a weight you know 
like a like he had that like he had a he had a <laughs> I, I never like understood if, how he got away with it. <laughs> if you get to a certain level of something where it's like you feel like maybe like you're an outcast or something, he then you always go, I'm from Chattanooga. So I can say it's like I've been to Chattanooga. It's like the most <laughs> segregated place in the world. Dude, he used to say it Chattanooga. Is white here, black there. <laughs> he did. Really? Yeah. He say I'm the number one chatter. <laughs> oh, really? And finish it off, yeah, dude. Yeah, that's wild. And Chattanooga is definitely a little racist, anyway. Oh, yeah. You... It's so segregated. And if he's a big fat white guy, he was probably on the white side. Right? I mean, yeah. just by name. I didn't mean just by name, dude. Yeah. You know, Horrible like if you're st- like if your high school's like the Nougers, like that's oh, yeah. insane. Oh, uh, look this up. There's <laughs> this a, gotta stop. There's man. a. This gotta stop. I, I don't know if it's a high school or a college, um, in Oklahoma where like. Th- their mascot is like the fighting midgets. Really? Yeah. Mm. The, and, and like everyone, uh, there, there, there's some high school. There was one in Illinois, actually. I know a kid that I think went to a school and the, the midget was a mascot, a fighting midgets mascot. Fighting midgets mascot, Dickinson High School. South Dakota, of course. Oh, South Dakota, North Dakota. There it is. Dickinson High School in, no- in North Dakota. Oh, now, now oh the they Mustangs. changed it. They changed it from the midgets to the Mustangs? Hmm. I don't know if I like that. The little people of America have more clout than all of Native Americans. <laughs> because, like, Redskins, they're just like, we're not changing them, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, in fact, on opening day, we're going to bring out some Native Americans. We'll pay them some money, put them in Chiefs jerseys or whatever, yeah, Redskins yeah, yeah. jerseys. Yeah. And, and say, no, we're cool with it before yeah. they even consider changing it. Right. We, we'll, have, we'll, we'll have Chief Wahoo from, yeah. from, from the, the Cleveland, Cleveland Indians, Indians yeah. just, who, who, who's just a white guy who's, like, riding a horse out there. I That's love Chief fine. Wahoo, though. I got, I'm a big fan of Chief Wahoo. <laughs> Really? You know the guy? <laughs> no, I don't know the guy, but I'm saying like the Indians, you know why they're called the Indians? I'm going to nerd out. I love baseball. Because uh, it's from Indiana? Nope. <laughs> it's a good guess though. <laughs> Cleveland? No, they were uh, they were called the, uh, the Cleveland Spiders, and then they get they had like the first ever Native American on the baseball team. Oh, wow. And then one, and then they got a, they got like a second Native American, and they were, uh-huh. only, they were the only team that had like two Native Americans, mm-hmm. and so one of the guys the on the Cleveland Indians, on the Cleveland Spiders at the time, goes, man, we should start calling ourselves the Cleveland Indians. He's like basically razzing his teammates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, it'd make us look super progressive, like, and it'd be good. So they, so they literally started calling them the Cleveland Indians. They changed the team name, and wow. the original Chief Wahoo was actually—he looked a little less racist. He kind of looked like one of these Simpsons guys. He was like mm-hmm. a yellow-faced Chief mm-hmm. Wahoo, and that's the thing. Is uh, Judd Apatow has that great joke they did on the Tonight Show. He's like, any drawing of a Jewish person is inherently anti-Semitic. Yeah, <laughs> because like if I hand you a paper and said draw a Jewish person, and then you hand it back to me, it's gonna look pretty offensive, right? right. Because like you're you trying can't. to draw the attributes yeah. of the person. Exactly. Same thing happened with this. They said draw an Indian, and the guy's like, oh, yeah, it's a cartoonist. Here, scroll it. down. You can see that you, you yeah, see the, the original Chief Wahoo. Chihuahua. He was kind of yellow, and then they had to like redo it because Native Americans and people were very upset. But look at the new one. <laughs> <laughs> they, the new one, they just gave him veneers, made him red. <laughs> they made him, yeah. Chief Wahoo. And also, Chief Wahoo is supposed to mean, like, celebrating Indians. Like, Wahoo! We're, yeah. chill, we're <laughs> celebrating. So it's all well-intentioned, I say. Like, all the Indian stuff is pretty well-intentioned. It, 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 it's just amazing to me that they changed the name to the Cleveland Indians after they had two Indian players, like... Can you imagine if... But that's kind of nice, though, when you think about yeah, it. Yeah, they thought they were doing, like, a funny, cool thing. Yeah, but, like, just imagine if all teams did that. Like, when Jackie Robinson <laughs> it, first went on the Dodgers, that's they're like, great. well, we're not the Dodgers anymore. We're the... <laughs> and then you say some terms. The Jackies. Oh, Dude, there used the to be the, the Atlanta <laughs> Crackers, and that was a Negro Leagues team. Really? The Atlanta Crackers. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah. Oh, they were called the Atlanta Black Crackers. <laughs> oh, the Black Crackers? Wait, that because they were kind of saying like we're like a team of white boys. I don't know if that's how that worked, but they were the. Uh, there you go. The Atlanta Crackers played first in the Southern Association game, uh, baseball, 1902. Yeah, and wow. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's why the they were why they were called that, but yeah, I think the origins of the team name is unknown. But there was a there, if you go to the Negro League Museum, uh, which is actually, a great that's museum, awesome I've place been right there. by the Jazz Museum. I didn't even have time for the Jazz Museum because I just they thought yeah. I was patronizing them. I Wait, stayed we're in Cleveland. No, the Negro League Museum is in Kansas City. Oh, yeah, it is awesome. It's awesome, yeah. I've and I there. stayed over there so much because I just love baseball so much. And they were like, they thought I was mocking them. They're like, nobody likes it this much. Like, this guy's been in there for like six hours. I like watched everything. I read everything. Yeah, and that's how yeah, I know yeah. all this crap. But, um, but yeah, they were called the Atlanta the Atlanta Crackers. And I think that they were doing that as like a like an FU to the White <laughs> League. Like, all right, we'll, well, we'll be the I, Crackers. Yeah. Well, because when I saw that... Uh, High school was called the Fighting Midgets. I'm like, I want a T-shirt. Yeah, it's you know cool. What I mean? Like, I don't, I, I don't want you to shut down. I if want the intentions are good, I think. Yeah, that's that's how I measure it. That, Not everyone measures it that way, but that's right. How I it. That and it's like you're naming your school the Fighting Midgets. That means you think 
that the midget is intimidating. It's powerful, right. yeah. You know what I mean? That means it's like, oh, you're a tiger? Fuck you. We're the midgets. And when in real life, we would be a snack. But they're right. like, no. <laughs> but Our also, fight it's, midgets will be tigers. It's like, what's worse, being ignored and acting like you're not a thing? Yes. Or exactly. being acknowledged and, and dealing with whatever kind of uncomfortability of that difference is. Does that make sense? No, it, totally. And because and, and the worst thing you could do to anyone who uh, is, quote, unquote, different is ignore that person right. and ignore and ignore the worse. difference yeah yeah, yeah. uh yeah like if, if i see a guy it happened this weekend uh oh okay this <laughs> so <laughs> i did shows in oklahoma city this weekend and right in the front row uh a female dwarf sat right in the front row she's right and it's just it, it, it was like okay i have to mention right. this i can't not talk about the fact that there's a dwarf right there in the front row and I asked her what she did for a living, <laughs> and no bullshit. She goes, "I'm a psychologist." And I go, and I start laughing, and everyone's like, "Why are you laughing?" I, I go, "Cause she's a shrink." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> perfect. And I'm like, "Come, come on!" Like you've got that's a perfect. Did she love it? She loved it, and 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 that moment would have never happened sure. if I would have just ignored. Like, oh, I don't see another little person right. In, right. in my audience. What's up, Big Tiffany? And she's like, no <laughs> yeah, one, no, yeah, exactly. No one's ever called me that. That's a big girl. But no, I, no. That's, <laughs> like how I want to live my life is like I, I'm I'm friends with lots of different people in walks of life. I don't just blanketly think I'm a good person and not know any. You know how many people are like, these, we got to fight for these trans rights. I'm like, name five of your trans friends, and yeah. they're like, well, I've never like met a trans. You're like, yeah, exactly. Shut the hell up. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, annoying. it gets crooked like that, dude. It's all. Uh... That shit's hectic, man. It's hectic to like, yeah, but I think it, na but naturally you feel a certain way. Like naturally you kind of know how to behave. Yeah. You know, I yeah. feel like, and then you can tell if somebody else is upset. Yeah. You and know, then you go, okay, that was bad. Right. Yeah. And that was not, too much. I, I and then you apologize. Like something you're you learned. asking him like questions. I mean, you guys have probably been friends for a long time, but you'll ask him questions like, hey, is it okay if I just ask you? And that's, I think, way more respectful yeah. than having someone and just completely, like my buddy's, uh, my buddy Nico, his, his son has like a, uh, a, like kind of a birth defect in his hand so he's kind of what got he's like, like spock yeah kind of like a ninja turtle you know he's got oh, like three yeah. and oh like and, ryan e miller kind of like, what I do you mean like him, a, i like i just asked yeah, what but, happened but, yeah and he was happy to talk about it and we yeah. didn't have, it'd have to be this like weird like hey what happened to your son? you know it's, yeah yeah you i think that's how you should address those things yeah, yeah. let's talk that's about how i do it let's usually learn. like if i'll see somebody that's missing a limb or something i'll just ask him hey what happened you know yeah. how did you lose your leg what yeah. happened to your leg you he's know like, Man, i'm just trying to get a starbucks she's like just tell yeah. me what happened to your leg. <laughs> yeah tell me what happened to that leg he's like not. let me sign it and they're like it's not a cast it's a, a piece of titanium <laughs> and they're like well have just, a good summer he's like Theo Vaughn. <laughs> yeah get away from me with that marks a lot <laughs> never change um <laughs> I want to talk. Uh, I'm sitting here with Brad Williams and Jeff Dye, um, both comedians. Um, Allegedly, road yeah. dogs. <laughs> We're the road dogs. Yeah. I, mean, I feel like. And you guys, I feel like, are the both of the first guys who have gone and performed. Yeah. Live comedy since this whole thing yeah, yeah we, we were headlined wise guys this weekend yeah and i was and at, you're there next weekend right yeah and i was at and not virtually we flew there we flew there <laughs> we did the whole thing and so crazy i was man. at brick really? comedy in yeah. oklahoma city so yeah explain to me yeah i was at wise guys in salt lake city it, it, yeah just explain to me why it's crazy well i guess i mean my first uh, i guess like my, I didn't. I don't have any fear of like people coming to the event. I didn't mm -hmm. have any th my thoughts anyway. I didn't have any thoughts about that. I had thoughts about like as a comedian being on stage. Since there's going to be less people in the audience, yeah. would I feel like bummed out? Would oh, I yeah, feel yeah. like this isn't the that. same? Like yeah, would I feel I like? About that. And then I started thinking from a business standpoint, like, okay, well, is this business even going to make enough money? Like, are these waitresses going to make enough money tonight? Like, um, I'll tell you who didn't make enough money: the comedian. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that's another now thing. they've got a reason to go. Hey, man, we have a limited audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, it's only we have to cap them out at a hundred. I can't like work a bonus deal or anything like yeah, that. So yeah, that was it. Have... But the waitress made great money. They did. Yeah. Yes, because everyone's so, audiences, uh. and, and you guys will both know this. And maybe anyone that listens that isn't a comedian, you might not know. But audiences are famously and more so than ever now that podcasts have blown up. People people didn't used to know comedians they just went to the improv and they, they'd maybe right. hope to Who's see there? one famous person yeah, and then yeah. all the other comedians they'd be like this is great i would say in the last eight years i've witnessed with the success of you and segura and yeah. the, uh basically everyone that's on this wall right is now people if they haven't seen you before they're like 
who's this guy? I've never heard of him. And then the vibe shifts to this weird, like, make me laugh, bitch. Like, that's the vibe. Where I'm unfunny Damn. till proven funny. And mm -hmm. then it kind of is like, oh, he is funny. And I have never even heard of him because I listen to all the podcasts. I'm shocked <laughs> that someone is funny that I don't know. Right? Whereas that totally changed. Yeah. This weekend, dude, people were so generous. Like, one dude tipped our server like 200 bucks. Wow. All awesome. these people were gushing to me, like, oh my God, thank you. So it was, they were just so happy. I, yeah. I was crushing on like throwaway lines. Like, so it was very generous. Yeah. Did you feel, um, what were some of you guys' fears going into it before we even talk about what the weekend, what the weekends were like? Like, did you have any, like, just our thoughts, even just thoughts? Yeah. I, uh, I wasn't worried about the shows. And in terms of like, you look out in the audience and it sounds different because it's at a third capacity or half capacity or whatever or whatever it is my philosophy is okay or i could stay home and there's no show there's no one right. getting laughs there's wow. no there's nothing you know so and yeah you're not gonna just flip flip a switch and we all come back and it's exactly the way it was right. we, we gotta acclimate gradually get into it and you know kind of test the waters a little bit and then if it's good then we'll move, then move up to the next level i was more worried about the travel than anything that and it was for me like the worst part for me wasn't the shows i love the shows the the audiences, much like you said, were great. They were so starved for content. They wanted right. to go out. They wanted to have fun. Uh, but traveling, that was weird because you had to wear the mask the whole time, which when you go to the grocery store, it's like, okay, it's an hour. But when you're flying, when I'm flying to Oklahoma City, that's six hours of You don't realize a, of how many snacks you try to sneak in there. <laughs> I'm trying to drink drinks. You yeah. Know? yeah, like that's six hours of wearing a mask. And then like... Back my ears are hurting, you know? You know, yeah. And, and like they're, they're not they're not serving food on the plane. So you got like, if it's a long flight, you're like, okay, I got to right. snack up before I get on. And were the seats spaced out on your flights more? Was there uh, something like that? Southwest was American Airlines did not give a... You're too, fam you're too famous to fly Southwest, Brad, first of all. <laughs> This yeah. guy's flying southwest. You're killing it, man. You're I mean, I've been, I've, I've been on there. We're for Southwest. <laughs> right? It was 98 bucks. Hey, you got it. So I flew back. from LAX to Salt Lake City yeah. and then Salt Lake City to Seattle, Seattle to LAX because they canceled all these like legs of flights. Right, so right, right. It took like, right. a longer mm. trip home. There was nobody in the airports, nobody on my flight. That was kind of eerie, but that's yeah. pretty safe. I mean, like if I see no people, I'm not afraid. Yeah. Also, I will say, and I know this is going to annoy all the liberal New York comedians that I'm going to say this, but I, I dealt with it pretty like selfishly. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, I'm not afraid. I want to go tell jokes. I'm wearing the mask out of respect for others. If you want to come hug me, I don't give a shit. Like I've, I'm so. Well, and also like for I, like I for don't you, care. Like right. for you, like for you personally, you're in that group that, according to the the, the, the science, it's like you should be fine. Right. It like you you don't have an immune problem. You're a healthy guy. You got a big dick. Like like you, you. like you. Well, will I will be fine. say the people that come to my shows. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, seem to not care either. Right, <laughs> and I don't so. So if if they get me sick or I get them sick, fuck them. Yeah, if they come out, yeah, <laughs> they that's came a thing. out. Yeah, and so it's like I'm not hurting Graham. Graham, she's at home. Right, like, I, like you know, I'm, and I know that that's a selfish take, and I'm admitting that I'm selfish because I just want to get back to comedy so bad. Yeah, and I'm so tired of being at my house with my dog. I tried to do mm. one of those virtual shows, had a great time, but it wasn't the same. Yeah, I did and a few so of those too. I need to. Weird. I ne I needed it. I needed to like my. I need my hotel rooms. I need to flirt with girls. I need to tell jokes. Yeah. I, I needed some sort of semblance of what I'm used to. Whenever you got to the club, like, uh, did you feel like? Were, did they seem really, really excited to like be back in business? Yeah. Like, yeah, they were stoked, and the wait staff was stoked because they had a job. You know, yeah. that's like people were happy, man. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it, it's. I mean, I'll I'll respect anyone's wishes if they want to stay home, if, if they want to go out, whatever. But like I, I understand when you say, "Oh, all the restaurants are closed." There's some people there that just okay, they can't, they can't hunker down for three, four months and sure. then be fine. Like their rent is due. They got, they got, they got, they got to buy food. They got to do all these things. Like so, I respect that if they, if you're, you're like, no, I have to go work. So but also, we weren't at we a that. beach. Like yeah, like laying on each other and sweating and <laughs> kissing and stuff. We, I was at a comedy club in and that literally like. Everybody that came in had to get their temperature taken. Yep. Okay. They had yep, their hands sanitized. Really? They had to wear a mask to come in. They had to wear their mask on the way out. When they get sat at their table, the tables are six feet apart. Right? There's no party larger than four. Mm -hmm. Each comic had their own separate microphone that yep. were sanitized in between wow. the show. So, I mean... There's a safe and way you, to do this. Did you bring your mic from home? I bring jokingly brought a mic from home to do a like gag. that I used to do this gag where... Um, 
This is gonna be bra- This is gonna be bad. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> okay, okay, it was on. bad. Well, actually, I'll tell you. It was. No, tell me funny once. It. If you <laughs> see me, if you see me at the store, and then you see me do it again in the improv, you're like, I just saw this idiot. Yeah. So the joke is like, I would come out. I did this way before the quarantine. Uh, I, I would come out and I would like look like I was like disgusted with like the microphone, mm-hmm. and I would like take it out and then put it on the table, and then. I'd pull out like gold microphone out of my back pocket, <laughs> pop it in, just act like, and then be, and then everyone would, like laugh because they were like so confused by me doing the first part. Right. And then I'd be like, yeah, you know, they don't clean those things, and it just makes me look like this elitist kind of guy. Oh, I like that. The problem with that bit is it's hilarious if I'm following like uh, that, you know, Drew, that stuttering guy, or if I'm following, you know, mm-hmm. Theo or something. But if I'm following like Miss Pat and I just come out and I'm like, oh <laughs> yeah. I just, like, like, now now the crowd's like, what the hell was that, man? Yeah. <laughs> is this dude like? A racist, <laughs> like so. That's why I had yeah. to stop. I stopped doing it. I basically Bobby Lee does it. You're like, you know those people. Yeah, yeah. you're like, oh, you know those yeah. people that aren't welcome at the VFW. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. Yeah. And I'm so dumb that I didn't put that together. I was just like, I, why did nobody laugh this time? Yeah. Like, dude, you look like an asshole. And so I stopped doing it. But then I was Jamar like, Jamar Neighbors went on before you, yeah. and now you look like a piece of shit. I, I'm so dumb. I didn't even connect it. <laughs> so I brought that same mic and did the same gag each mm. show for this. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, because there was four mics for all, and I said, take one of those mics down and yeah. i'm gonna pretend like they didn't leave me a mic and mm. i'm just gonna have to like do the gag that i brought my own yeah and, and and that's the thing is like you said like there's there's precautions that you could take so it's definitely like it, it's not yes the sa- the safest thing would be to just stay in your homes and throw a blanket over True. you and never leave your house yeah that's the safest thing but there are there are ways to do these shows that it's like okay yeah, yeah. take take temperature stay spread apart and uh, no, no one was sat at a table with someone they didn't know. So like, wow. it, so it's like, yeah, if you came in the same car together, you sat at the same. And table I have together. coronavirus, and I feel fine, man. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the big hubbub is, you know. That, Dude, coronavirus models would be cool if they had like a group of men or women that have it, that. but that are fine. Just pretend, yeah. Like, put like some sores on us that just like act like. I don't know who would be. Uh, what comedians would be? I, I've always Jeff's only. He mm. used to be like kind of you. What? Maybe Delia gets factored in, I think, by his confidence. Oh, for like handsome, good looking male, ma- male comedians. Oh, there's tons, man. Kevin Hart, John Mulaney. Lachlan Peterson. Lachlan Peterson. Okay. No, Lachlan. One, no one's better than Lachlan Mulaney Patterson, in there. isn't it? What's that? Lachlan Patterson? Patterson, sorry. I fucked sorry. up his name. L- um, Lachlan Patterson. No one's better looking than L- Lachlan Patterson. There is that generic, like, not generic, but there's the this the, there's that old ideology, like, oh, he's too good looking to be a comedian or something. Yeah. But if you look at, like, how many, like, there's tons of good looking comedians. Yeah. Are there? Yeah. Really? Richard Pryor, I guess, was kind of handsome. You're a good looking well, guy, Murphy. Theo. Like, you're I'm like okay. an attractive guy. Well, but then uh, it's like, I'm an Jerry eight. Seinfeld's not ugly. Johnny Carson was handsome. Yeah, because uh, you all because you also have to factor in Letterman's ugly, we're, right? But he's we're looking at it from the scope of Los Angeles, like oh well, I'm in LA six or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, but then you go out to South Dakota to perform for the Fighting Midgets, and you're like, oh, I'm a nine, exactly. <laughs> this is awesome. Yeah, Chris yeah. is a good look. At Crystal Lee is a good look. There's like a uh, think about look at Lachlan. Uh, Lachlan, Jesus. Look at Lachlan, Lachlan. Lachlan is handsome. That yeah, is a ha- that is a God. handsome dude. What's the guy? Sometimes I don't even know what he's talking about, dude. He could be a comedian. He could be working for Postman. Jack he could, Knight's he could be... a good-looking guy, but nobody would ever go. He's too good-looking to do comedy because that's a black guy. So they're just gonna go. <laughs> uh, you know, that's his, his thing's a black guy. You, you can't you can't say that he's too handsome. Yeah. Uh, you spelled Jack wrong. Jack Jack. He spells J. But they K-K. found it though. Oh, okay. Did Google's like, it? we know what you mean, white guy. <laughs> I know. But that's the thing is like like why is it when Kevin Hart's handsome they're not like he's too good looking for comedy. They're like, well, right. he's short and he's a black guy. Let him, you know, it's like, what? He's a really he's got Well, there's abs. a black pass. You get a black pass Super for a lot of stuff. Super handsome, <laughs> you know. Yeah, so yeah, there, 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 there's some good looking. You had to grow a mullet for God's sakes. Everyone was going that guy's too good looking. Oh, dude, I was, I felt hor I felt so uncomfortable without long hair. Really? Oh, yeah. dude, once I grew my hair long, mm-hmm. I never now I couldn't even imagine it being short again. I just I love felt it. I don't know. I just felt so exposed before. <laughs> Dude, if you never grow up, because here's yeah. what happened. I saw pictures of myself. I said, man, I never had long hair. I'm mm-hmm. never going to have it in my whole life, I guess. Yeah. And so yeah. then I grew it out and I was like, oh, wow, dude, I love this. This is what I was supposed to have. You look and like some Mitch asshole Williams. kept taking me to get my hair cut, my mother. <laughs> Miss Bobby, dude, this lady named Miss Bobby. You got a and I thought she was a man forever because of her name, but she wasn't. It was just, she was like 90 and they used to call B O B B I E. And she used to cut my hair for fucking $4, dude. Miss Bobby. Miss Bobby. Shout out to that dude. And I Miss think Bobby. She had scissors. That was her, basically, her. 
her. Uh, that's, that's how she got the job. Her yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah. oh, yeah, yeah. You just show up. You got you cut one. Numbers. You figure it Looks out. Like shit, no mirrors in the whole place where you cut it. No, no mirrors. No, bro. she doesn't want you to bad. critique it. <laughs> yeah. Now, um, so <laughs> what else at the place? So I didn't even think about the mics. So the microphones on stage. Yeah. Because I'm just trying to think like. Yeah, to me, it did. Did it feel like you guys were pioneers? Like, did you guys feel like holy shit? Like, I it, didn't think I was until yeah. I got back. I posted. I was. Po you didn't post yours. Uh, I post on Instagram. Oh, uh, I posted all mine on all yeah. on all the stuff. Just say, hey, I'm out. Comedy's back. Let's do this. Come to the shows. Let's have a good time. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, and I must have gotten, and I'm not exaggerating. Probably forty people, forty comics, either text or called the next day, looking for work, looking to no, get the saying, what was that like? Or, oh hey, yeah, yeah, that happened Everybody. to me too. I, yeah, I've never. Any Letterman's never called my phone in my life. <laughs> yeah, we like we'll do snotty texts back and forth. Like sure. I'm, I'm like stoned at a at a hotel, and Annie Letterman's. Yeah, calling. she's great to sext with, even though neither one of y'all is gonna hook up with each other. <laughs> Other. Annie, I'm no joke. Annie's great for that. Annie I didn't know that. She just loves like fun yeah, conversations, so you good. can like that's yeah, great. You can, you can, you like, can I just things. practice sexting oh, with you? Yeah, I was know? bad on the phone with her because I was just going like, whoa! Like I was like kind of like I didn't expect anyone to call. I don't know. I, was, I, was, I shouldn't even have answered. Well. Yeah, I got I got a few comics calling me and, too, oh, and, and it's like like it's like you guys know that it's just like it's comedy, right? It's the same. Like it, it, it was. It was the same. It, 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 it was the same. Yeah, there's a few less people. Um, I was more bummed that like in between shows or during the daytime i couldn't walk around and like do uh, things in the city i did do that i was bummed about that i did that but it was just the same as kind of california like where you i walked to like a coffee shop i was able to have coffee there mm -hmm. i like sat in like this park there was a bar that had like an open patio you could sit on oh, oh nice. there you go so that was kind of nice and i was giddy i wouldn't shut up i was sitting with two friends yeah and i just like was motor mouth because i was so excited to be back like in Doing the sunshine stuff. on a patio with like a cold with beer people. and like food and i was like being able to just do yeah because like, i've been in my house man it's boring. yeah yeah and, and you were so you were in oklahoma city yeah and th and that and that was rough because th that that club it's a great club it's in the middle of this downtown area called bricktown and like i got sad walking around during the day because it's like there's a minor league baseball park right oh, there oh, yeah. where the, Red the Birds, uh, what is it? Oklahoma City Dodgers play. Cool. Uh, and then the the Thunder Stadium is right there, too. And there's a big movie theater. There's a river walk. There's all this stuff. And I'm like, wow, if this was yeah. all open, this would have been – I could have gone to a baseball game during the day, come yeah. a day early, see the Thunder play, see a movie. Like, it, it would have been a whole great weekend. So that, so that club's going to be – Fantastic! Once once ever, ever, everything starts opening up again, it, it's gonna be great. But Who that owns the club. Uh, the same Adam Norwest. Is yeah, it, that's the that club. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, okay. the same people that do uh, Tacoma. It looked like they packed them kind of in on yours. I saw a picture of the show. Because <laughs> I, hey, I couldn't I'm, find any of the stuff. I was looking for yours. I, yeah. Like, when he told me you, did, I was like, I didn't. Brad didn't go on the run because I I knew we talked about you going to Wise Guys. Yeah. Go on. Go on. Go on. You're there like, this well, week. Who was he there? Yeah. And um and so I was looking for it and I only could find like a dude tagged you in a photo from like the back green room area. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Where the seats were. Yeah. Were you no. nervous about putting it on social media? I was. I put it on Instagram because that's people that follow you that like they like you, they they love you. I was I didn't put it on Twitter because I was nervous that someone would start retweeting it and then I was someone hoping would start someone would start call me an asshole I was for going out and go ahead earning and my goddamn it. living. Go ahead, Nicky yeah. Glazer, talking about being <laughs> you're such a hero for staying home with your parents. Go ahead, come at me. <laughs> Oh, how heroic. You well, millionaire. You haven't had <laughs> sex for two months. Get a life. Well, it, it, you could do it. You, Nikki, you do grosser <laughs> things all the time, bragging about anal sex. That's You're good, worried about a virus you nobody's a ever point. seen. Yeah. Shut up. Yeah, <laughs> wear, wear a face mask on your beehole, dude, <laughs> if you want to really take care of, of, no, like, of there, others. There's some sort of weird, like, uh, heroic, like, oh, we're such heroes. There is. Well, I noticed, too, that there's this thing where I think a lot of people want you to stay home because mm -hmm. it gives them, and I'm not saying this about Nikki, but just it gives them a sense of control control and a sense of like okay i don't have to do anything nobody can do anything yeah, right there's it, the photo it keeps them in a safe space yeah that's the one i was referring to yeah so they look pretty your, close to each other wow that's nice man yeah well they only look close to each other compared to where i played i guess well that and it's like okay i mean i'll tell you that from this stage this is a weird angle because yes yeah. it looks very close to each other but it's like those photos of the beach where they're where they're like so and so's on the beach you know uh, all the all the people and then if you really zoom in you're like oh no people are separate yeah right. like they're not like they're not like 
throwing a towel like on top of each other. Or like, like in the NFL, shit. they always air the game from the side, so it looks like those linemen are right next to each other. But if there was like a bird's eye view, or if right. it was north to south, yeah, you'd see that there's gaps. Yeah, the yeah, thing. there's gaps. So, yeah, or like whenever you get it, catch a fish. Remember if you caught a fish and you put it in the back of a fake truck, remember and took that picture. <laughs> and you were like, look at this big fish, and it was just a um little fish. That's yeah, my favorite but example. dude, it was great, and they <laughs> all my grandpa obviously do that. They they all had a great time, and uh, yeah, it, it was just so like I got so many messages afterward. From, yeah. From, and Everyone's wanting to know. Yeah, and just all my scared just, friends going, uh huh. Yeah, and you're like, doing that. Yeah, it's almost like you guys are almost like the Neil Armstrong and whoever the <laughs> and Buzz Aldrin. I feel like of comedy. I'm not even joking, man. Yeah, it was like I was like, oh my god, because I I've been taking a break from having guests, just having guests on the podcast, just been really tired, and so yeah. But I was like, oh my god, I said I I just have to know about this. Well, yeah. and I I think yeah, that's bread. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> oh, nice. That's a good shot. I'm up there. Uh, yeah, because well, I didn't do a meet and greet afterward, so I had a moment where I was like, "All right, everyone, take take out your phones, and I'm gonna do some poses on the stage, oh, awesome. so you can like have a oh, photo and post on your social media." Because I I didn't want to do a meet and greet, so I started like grabbing the mic stand and like doing stuff that I would never do actually during my act. And I thought, ah, social distancing, I'll just wave a mic stand around my face. And uh, you must be strong, man. Those mic stands are heavy. <laughs> they are. They are pretty heavy. They're little compact and biceps. I also want to go in and and. Uh, was Brad Williams com- Brad Williams comic at Brad Williams comic was amazing funny as hell for someone so little <laughs> what does that mean <laughs> That's the comment. Funny as hell for someone so little. What do you think a what? tiny person telling jokes isn't going to be good? I thought his like, jokes. Damn, man. I, I thought how'd the they, laughs would be one third of the. Uh, yeah, yeah, how yeah. they fit all the funny in that little guy. Yeah, you know? man. I mean, he's tiny. I didn't think a tiny guy would be funny. Uh, God, bless I will you, admit Obama. my meet and greet got irresponsible. That is, yeah, because <laughs> yeah. you know I'm talking a big game on stage, acting like I don't care. I'm doing all these jokes about how like I was like I didn't get my coronavirus from some millennial sneezing on me in Uber. When I heard about it, I ordered bats. I ate a bat. That's what I did. <laughs> I want it from the source. I got yeah. it the right way. So I'm doing right. all these like, and that's riling them up a little, you know? And so it, it's riling them up in the worst way. We're like, yeah, fuck these masks. What are we, ca-? you know? Yeah, and like, right, that's right, the right. worst. I'm that's irresponsible. But I was just doing comedy. And then afterwards at the meet and greet, they're like, hey, can we get a photo with you? And I was like, yeah, you want a mask or no mask? And they're like, dude, we don't care about that. And they're like all touching. It. Like it did get a little yeah, irresponsible. Oh, so you get a, yeah, you get a, but do you Start get nervous at that point a little? No, I don't care. Yeah. Then, yeah. Then the guys was like starting to lick your face and stuff. That, <laughs> well, that, same, that was a little inappropriate. It's the same thing I thought. <laughs> as earlier it's like they're obviously you know if they get sick they get sick yeah <laughs> that's on them yeah it's interesting it's like a, it's definitely become i think a, a lot of people that are it's like you know do i am i risking getting sick or am i just do i think that this thing has kind of run its course do i feel like we've done everything that we can is like by flattening the curve it's always kind of two weeks you know every time they say like oh two yeah. weeks to this two mm-hmm. weeks to that um I think you just got to make your decision. Yeah, right. it's like yo, I would never judge anyone for wearing gloves out in public and doing the mask and like keeping it. I get, I think that's great. I think yeah. that's awesome. I just, if you don't want to do that, that, that you know, like, like what's that one guy? God, they gave us like free will. Yeah, yeah. And we love that about him. We love that he lets us do whatever. Yeah. Well, like whatever the consequences are. Right. Yeah, that's your. Yeah, that because yeah, that's the way that I feel a lot of times. I'm still going to be smart and wise. Mm-hmm. I've always had I feel like decent instincts, so I'm going to trust yeah. my instincts. Yeah, and 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 like like my parents are both like 75, and my dad's uh, my dad's immune compromised. Sure. He should not be. Right, going out and, and if you're going to go hang out with them, you shouldn't be. I, I exactly. Right, I should go get tested. Exactly. Or I should, like, like if, get, but, if 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 grandma's living with you at your house, then then you have a different responsibility. Yeah. Uh, so we're not saying like everyone just go out, but yeah. if you're young, healthy, 30, 30 year old, twenty year old, and you're like, I, w- I want to go just have a little bit of fun. Yeah, and, and there's a very f- there was very few times yeah. someone was in like my bubble. Right. To be yeah. honest, like if I look over the entire weekend, there was very few times that anyone yeah. is it was even that close to me. Yeah. Yeah, fun. there really is actually whenever you go to a comedy club, there's not that there really aren't a lot of times except for when you're in the green room with other comics. Mm-hmm. There's not a lot of times and if you don't do meet and greet, then there's not a lot of times where you interact like real too yeah. close with other right. people really. You come out on stage. Yeah. I mean, you're almost really the safest person in the room in a lot of ways that is the comedian that was my that was my thought and i even i even uh when i was doing my show i even tried to be at the back of the stage because i oh. thought oh if i talk spit. and like i yeah. spit out and because i've done that before where i've been on stage and i've said something and i and i watched the spit oh yeah like, oh yeah fly i've said that a bunch face. And it's like, oh, that's going right in yeah. her. Yeah. Oh, that's bad. That guy's getting that. I had one guy walk on the Friday early show because um, we had all the microphones out there. 
uh, all all th three of them, I guess, because yeah. I told them to strike one of them, and then I used the thing. And so the other two microphones are just behind me with the things in. And I'm saying, like, right, guys, are we really that scared? Even the people that are the most scared, who claim that they're the most scared of this, they're they're all they're all at home going, "Ooh, did you watch Tiger King?" and singing, sh sending each other like big black eyed dick memes. Like nobody's really that afraid. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If this is the end of the world, like no one seems to really be that scared. And so the people are like, you know, cheering. Around. And so I go, "Right, we're not afraid." And I just started palming the other mics, like. Yeah. Uh, Oh, like of the other comics, like Mike's, like with my bare hand. Well, that's also because you're in Utah. In Utah, and that right. basketball player Rudy. Rudy Gay. No, oh, not Rudy, Rudy Gay. Gobert. Rudy Gobert. 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 Rudy and so Gay, I was, not. I thought it would be funny, like to do like a thing like that. Also, they sanitize those mics in between, and I'm the last guy, so that we're yeah. gonna sanitize those you're anyways. Fine. Um, so I thought it was funny. Everyone's like having a laugh, and this dude was fucking furious. He like stood up. He like went to the front. He's like, "What is he doing in there?" I mean, this is the whole thing is that we were doing this like responsibly, and he's doing, all that. and I was like, oh, wow. Yes, so that uh, guy's yeah. kind of in the middle, then. Yeah. That guy's like, <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and cause he also you, watched the whole show with his mask on. He had like his, like the entire. Show. Most people took the mask off for the show, and then they mm. put their mask back on. He had his whole thing. How about brave him. is that guy, though? Think about that. Like, if you, if in your head, that's where you are, fear wise, right, why and then do you it? go to a place, yeah, and you're like. Yeah. I'm going to rough it out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'll make myself do yeah. this. Yeah, it, it's, it's my wife's birthday. <laughs> yeah. And like I said, if you want if you want to stay home, I'm not going to make fun of anyone for wanting yeah. to stay home. Like stay home, it's fine. But then if someone wants to go out and be responsible and, you know, it's like, yeah, if if you're if you're walking up to people and strangers and spitting on them or right. licking their faces, okay, you're kind of a dick. But if, yeah. but if everyone's kind of like playing their part and doing their thing okay yeah. we can start we start coming back to what we to, to what we had before well some yeah. people are making it sound like just by leaving your home at any time to do anything you're a part of the problem like you must be some republican crazy person yeah. who thinks this virus isn't real it's like no there's ways to go about your life and try to earn some money and try to like yeah. have your job or try to maintain groceries for you. there's ways that you can go do your life yeah oh no i had, safely right yeah. and responsible like, not that's as the biggest good thing. not as what it was but yeah, yeah I, it's like are I people being responsible? Yeah, yeah. I, I had someone yell at me in my neighborhood for taking my dog for a walk because I didn't have my mask on. It's like no one, no one walks toward, no right. one walks towards us. No one does anything. I'm taking my dog for a right. walk like that, and and I got an, I have an. 80 pound pit bull I need to be able to breathe and have some oxygen to hold, to hold that fucker <laughs> back like this dude is I'd huge I'd pay to watch you watch it. dude one time I, I should sell tickets to just me walking my dog yeah. and just go it's a midget walking a pit bull yeah no. it's just so cool <laughs> on, a, on an OnlyFans I'd watch that on I'd only. watch that <laughs> I would. I literally. I want an image of that, like just of like Brad just mind his business and he's got like. A oh, I got. I, I probably got some photos on my Instagram That's about. Dude, you could have an insane OnlyFans. I feel like if you really wanted to. <laughs> Dude, if I wanted to, like, like if, if you want to really push that. Oh, uh, so <clears throat> so so this is something that uh, my wife and I did do because uh, uh, we have a uh, four month old child and uh, my wife uh, sold her breast milk to oh some my God. to some Hell yeah bot to some bodybuilders. Is there. that legal? Uh, maybe. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, there, that's my dog. In Hello. California, it is. <laughs> no, you can. But like, did she make good money, or was it like the same as like a, a gallon of homogenized milk? How much money? You no, no. I don't think you ask what how much money. I think at this point you just accept that they yeah, needed the money and that you, they did it. You yeah. charge. You well, charge saying, a little like, more. If someone says, "Hey, man, I'm a big fan of Theo Vaughn. How much for your used underwear?" You're like, "Get out of here, gross." You're yeah. gross, man. And then they're like, how about 500 grand? You're like, yeah, I get you a couple pairs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I'm thinking about like breast milk. It's like, here I am being all judgy. Yeah. But then when I hear the amount, I'm going to go, all right, yeah. It, makes it, was, it, 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 it was more than a gallon of milk. Let's wow. just say that. And so people, what they-, they Price-wise, what you weren't sending more than a gallon of her breast oh, no. milk. <laughs> no, <laughs> that would take a while. No, the price is- <laughs> Yeah, the price uh, was. Jesus, your wife, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's so dehydrated. <laughs> now, how do you, uh, when they get that, what do you put it in? Like a little bag or something? There, yeah, there's a- uh, uh, there's a bag that you, there because my wife would also uh, donate breast milk to 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 some hospitals to wear like something like Mad Max. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Did like you do that? Eggs. Remember those women they had to like get all their yeah. breast milk? Yeah, they were like oh, the lactation you people. Pulling that milk out the lady right there. <laughs> yeah, I've so. never had it. Actually, I had a little. I think a girl put some in my mouth once. <laughs> Just I've off her finger. Had. But this was at a restaurant, dude. This is like <laughs> after restaurant. the restaurant had closed was and the family the was still in there. <laughs> this is after the restaurant had closed and okay. the family was still in there. Oh, okay. What well, did you like... <laughs> 
Did you like get it from the source or did you like squirt across the room or how did it happen? <laughs> from the source, man. The I want to know where the old This is in Tucson. Grew up. This is in Tucson, dude. A lady was a in there. A mechanic where they'll put a little person in the engine to work <laughs> oh, yeah. on it. Miss Bobby's got no mirrors. And she's cutting hair. You got the a lady haircut. at a restaurant, a family dining establishment gave you breast milk from the source. She yeah. just put a little on her finger, but what are these men doing with that, Brad, when they get uh, it? They were uh, bodybuilders, and so breast milk uh, allegedly has like a higher protein. Oh, so no. like some bot, so like some bo- some bodybuilders really like to have breast milk. So uh, I I've got some friends that are in that community, and and, and once they found out, they're like, She's dude, pregnant, can we yeah. can we get no some? way? And I'm like, sure, but pay for it. Yeah, I'm not like, going to give you my baby's milk. <laughs> you think I'm squeezing my wife out over here yeah, for nothing? Yeah, exactly. Look at this. Here it says right here, body mothers are making thousands of dollars selling their pumped breast milk online to bodybuilders. Mm-hmm. Some bodybuilders claim breast milk helps build muscle mass more than any other food. I could see that. You know what's interesting about making money that you feel weird about? Oh, uh, breast milk is actually much lower in protein than cow's milk and bodybuilders, specifically large men, uh, need much more protein. Oh, so it, they're wrong? <laughs> yeah. Nick, right. See if you can find us a chart actually that shows like uh, the protein in breast milk compared to other milk. Yeah, but it, you know, it was a nice little it was a nice little side hustle. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so I, I got I got a golden doodle, right? I just got him. He's like, uh, oh, okay. seen pictures of him. Like six months beautiful. old now. Yeah, great yeah. dog. And every time, um, there's been times where people go, "You gonna get him neutered?" And I say, "Yeah, I'm not yet. He's only six months. He His nuts haven't even dropped." Mm. And then one lady. She mm-hmm. goes, uh, oh, you're not going to neuter him, are you? And I was like, oh, one of these people, right? Mm. And so I was like, uh, well, I mean, I don't know. Probably. I haven't thought about it. She's like, well, you know, it's good money. And I was like, what? And she goes, oh, well, like what you can do is you can, there's like a stud fee. Where basically like if you mm. want your dog to have sex, you'll like, they'll, someone will take your dog for a few hours, bring him back. Your dog just gets to have sex. And then yeah. they come back and hand you a check for, for a pretty good amount. Wow. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, what? that happens. Yeah, that's great. Watching my dog needs fuck. sex anyways. I'm not gonna watch, but like they they want to take him off my hands for a little while. He can go do that. They say give me a thousand bucks, and then my dog comes back all happy and tired. I think that's a pretty good deal. And you got a fat G. Yeah, it's not, it's not like a golden doodle girl is gonna show up on our doorstep. Like yo, my father lives here. Right. Like yo, we need some child support. Like you're it's gonna, a to- it seems like a totally go just on scratching at scratching at the bottom of the door. <laughs> totally harmless yeah, yeah. thing. Oh, you're- now, here it says right here in one cup. Of breast milk, yeah. Um, you have tw- you have two point five grams. Two point five grams of that's protein. not much protein. That's not yeah, because yeah. cow's milk has twelve grams. Is that eight, how does that compare, eight, Nick? Is eight that in the grams. same Do you cup? see the other right there? Eight grams in cow's milk whole. Eight grams in one percent. Eight grams in skim. So, yeah, so it's less. So it has the same amount as like almond milk, virtually. All right, well there you go. Which is not even milk; it's just nut water. Yeah, there you go. There you go, bo- there you go body builders. <laughs> yeah, dude, almond so. milk is just nut water, huh? <laughs> Nobody's getting milked. Why, Why are they, they calling call it milk? It, they should call it nut water. They really should because they they soak the almonds in yeah. water. Nut juice or nut milk? Yeah. Or I mean, nut water. I mean, they they should have like a rogue god almond milk company, and that's what they would do to like separate themselves like, there's yeah. some bad milk out there <laughs> you guys are calling yourselves almond milk um, and where water. do you drop that off in person do you leave that at the door how do they get oh, that oh for the uh, breast milk bodybuilders yeah we uh, we dropped it off in person wow Venmo wow. <laughs> I love that dude I like anything you got your you can wife make, in the yeah, back of the she's car she's making it yeah she's in there pumping it out could buy my urine I'd be like sure I'll get you as much as you want <laughs> You just keep in her hydrated. You keep buying her Gatorades every other Seven Eleven. Yeah, see? it's like hair, man. Hair's free, man. Yeah, yeah. It, it was crazy because yeah, there's there's never a good time to go through a pandemic. But like, we got the baby at home, so it's like, and thankfully, my wife, you know, the baby breastfeeds, so it's like that's a renewable food source. So yeah. it's like I I didn't have to go out and buy baby food or anything like that. We just had food for the baby. It was great. Yeah, that's awesome. Support for this past weekend comes from Manscaped. Who is number one in men's below-the-belt grooming? I will let you know it is Manscaped. They offer precision-engineered tools for your family jewels, baby. That low box. You know what I'm talking about. Crotch. It's time to take care of your junk. Manscaped does something that other places don't do. They have a mower it is called the Lawn Mower 2.0. It's waterproof and it's skin safe technology. So you can't freaking grip your own sack. You can't get it stuck up into your uh, pubis or anything like that. You can take care of your body, make it look classy. Give your dick that fade it always wanted. 
It's time to take care of your body and the perfect package 2.0 not only includes that lawn mower, it also includes anti-chafing boxer briefs that keep you feeling comfortable in the lowdown. For on-the-go freshness, you'll love the Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. You'll be able to take them balls anywhere. Oh, it's go time for your bag. Support this past weekend podcast. I know you hear a lot of ads, but we need the love. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Theo at manscaped.com. That's right. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code Theo at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code T-H-E-O. What, um, so what, what else was there like from the shows? I'm trying to think like after the show, like did the energy, did the energy feel the same like in the room during the show? Yeah, but more. I, I thought more. Just because really? everyone was just so excited to be out. Like, and there were lines that I would say that I would thought like, all right, this is kind of a throwaway line and just something casual. And then it would get a reaction where I'm like, oh, yeah, shit. It felt like a full room for Yeah. For sure. Really? Like, yeah. yeah, like, uh, I, That's I, awesome. I wrote a real basic joke about how like, like every, when the virus happened, every company had, had to put out their coronavirus commercial. Oh yeah, where they're just oh, like yeah. you know, every commercial right now it's, it's, it's starts we're together, off like we're gonna get through this. Yeah, like we yeah. get yeah. we get that in trying times. And all I said was like, does every we don't need every company's response to coronavirus? And there was a cheer in the room, and I'm like, oh, that's yeah, true though. Okay, people yeah. feel that way. Yeah, it's like I, it's like I get it. AT and T insurance. Let let me know what you're doing to lower my rates or whatever. But there's literally a commercial from Oreo fucking cookie. Yeah, I was getting emails from like Wells Fargo, like, don't worry. Yeah. Like, I'm not yeah. worried about you. <laughs> You're a bank. You'll yeah. be fine. Don't You're always behind glass. <laughs> We're fine, yeah. Don't worry, our ATMs are clean and it's <laughs> yeah, like it's so weird. <laughs> yeah, so like stuff Earth like that. Sending they, me figures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like Coca Cola is like here's what we're doing. It's like yeah. I, no, you're you're making sugar water. That's what you're doing. It's fine. No, I will say the thing I was most most nervous about, and again, this is selfish. I just thought I might be rusty because this is the longest I've oh, ever gone yeah. without doing stand up yeah. for 15 years. So I was Three like, months or whatever. It was. I was afraid I'd be rusty, but them being so generous, and then also I realized I wasn't that rusty. Like I was, mm. I felt rusty on that virtual show. Did it sure. feel weird? Yeah. Did it feel weird going back into like? Like, uh, cause like if say, if I were to get back on stage, I'm like I'm, I, I have some new stuff I would kind of do, but otherwise it's, it's like you got to change all the bits. And really? I'll tell you, just in the verbiage. So I, you know, I usually get up there and go, I just got back from Mexico, so I can go to all my Mexico stuff. Yeah. Right. I can't say it. I can't. You know. <laughs> or like if I want to make a joke about something that happened between me and a girl, mm -hmm. I'll usually lie and be like, oh, I took this girl on a date, like you know, the other day or like last week or something. Yeah. But now can't say that. Yeah. Say that. So I, I had to be like, oh, I remember. God, I think it was last year I took this girl out on a date. Yeah. yeah and but, but even that little adjustment was hard to do. Like, and it right. feels so dishonest and like so, but like, yeah. they know I haven't been doing anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. There, there, there's a bit I do about how like I'm, uh, it's something that my neighbor said to me because I'm never home. I'm always traveling. Oh, yeah. So then my neighbor uh, saw me in front of my house and then said something to me like I didn't live in my house. Right. It's like, I can't do that, that bit, bit right won't now. Work, yeah. No, it's because it's like, no, no, I've been home for three months. <laughs> they, they know me now. I, I would start jokes like i would start a joke and the guy I, I gotta change that start like you know that quick math you do in your head right yeah. like, that's not gonna work yeah, yeah. All, and only a comic would notice or only like i you know yeah quickly shift it. i i would uh i i would liken it to where if you've ever done those shows at the laugh factory on like christmas and thanksgiving where they feed the homeless and then they have you and have the comics go on stage and perform for the homeless. Mm -hmm. There, there's some bits you don't want to do right. for homeless people. Like you know when your car breaks. Oh, oh fuck. yeah, okay. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, like you, <laughs> you know when you're. Yeah, this dinner's pretty good. Where's all the hooch? <laughs> <laughs> They're like, what? Like I remember watching Joe Coy in one of these shows, and this is years ago, and he was uh, doing his bit about like orange chicken and Panda Express. He's he's like. You guys know what? <laughs> he stopped. It's like you guys know what panic spray. And like <laughs> that's pretty. Like they're like, of like, course, we take a shit in there every every day. <laughs> but like no they one know all the businesses. But like no one knew about it in in that room. You're like, oh fuck. But yeah. like if it, it, you you felt bad, you felt condescending, you felt like I I. But that's a, what a professional yeah. does is you yeah, have to you adjust. Wanna... And then Paul Mooney just went on stage and destroyed the room. Like, oh really? He, 
he killed. Wasn't he homeless now? Isn't that how that works? I'm not. I, 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 I have no that was idea. A crazy I hope person, not. I thought. I hope he not. had a special out a couple years ago. Oh, he did. Yeah. I mean, he could also be homeless now. Well, he's just a psycho. Yeah. No. So I thought he's like you know a lot of homeless people are psychos. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speak the language. But well, yeah. This, so yeah, it's he that like thing knew where, what they. He's like yeah. able to talk to him. You know? Dude, the homeless people in my. So I was jogging the other day, and there's a homeless. Uh, like I live right by a park over in Westwood, and so there's a lot of homeless now mm-hmm. right. living in the park. But they got campers. The city got campers and put them up since uh, the virus. Wow. Got the campers and put them in oh, different nice. campers. So wow. a lot of times Upgrade. at night. Yeah, it's yeah. really it's really pretty nice. They're nice. Cool. They're nice campers. So I'll drive jog by at night and the other night i'm jogging by and there's a guy out there smoking out on the uh he's like sitting like on the step of the open door of his camper and he's got music going and uh and it's like james brown or something something pretty fun pretty loud Mm -hmm. and then behind him there's a truck a sewage truck backing up there's a guy with a hose in a full hazmat suit and ppp like the the shield and everything walking up to it with a um to drain the sewage out of the camper Mm -hmm. uh and I'm just like, this is so bizarre. I'm like, here you have a homeless guy yeah. who's, you know, just doing whatever he wants. Yep. And then you have like, how much is this costing the to have this employee. sewage guy? <laughs> yes. I mean, and literally walking up like he was wa- like he was in Armageddon or something. Yeah. Like well, so mean, scared, full body suit walking in a up. pandemic and this dude's job is to deal with the piss and shit of homeless people. <laughs> That's true. I'd, That's be, true. I'd be sleeping in a hazmat <laughs> right, costume. Right, dude. I'd need a couple breaths. That no job, fight. he's not <laughs> telling jokes. Yeah. He's not telling jokes to some middle class people in Utah. Yeah, he, I mean this dude is. Yeah. Uh, that's the job. <laughs> did it feel like it was just uh, the audiences that came out? Did it feel like it was just rich people or anything like that? Nope. Did it have that vibe, no. or just felt like just regular people? It, it's uh, quite the opposite. It, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, uh, <laughs> all walks of life because there is de- there is definitely people that. Uh, do, do you ever have someone come to your show and tell and tell you all the struggles that they're going through, and you're like. Bro, maybe you shouldn't be spending money on a comedy show right now, like, cause there, cause there, there, there were some people that I got some messages afterwards, like, uh, yeah, the whole family like lost our jobs and oh blah, blah, no, blah, and, and and we haven't had anything, and yeah, we, and we're our, all drinking each other's breast milk, yeah, and our lights went out, but man, the for, fact that but, your show, but we bought tickets to your show, and I'm yeah. like, dude, and for maybe. fifty dollars, for fifty dollars a ticket, it was worth every penny, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. It, it's like, whoa, that was fifteen dollars ticket, well, I don't know, you pay a scalper, but like, <laughs> but like, there, there, there are some people where you're like. Whoa, Whoa, don't don't like save your money like save your money for but then uh there there was some other guy that uh because i wasn't doing the meet and greet i wasn't s- s- selling merch and i got this message from a guy that was like hey you didn't sell merch this week I go no and he goes so you probably lost out on some money i go yeah he goes what's your venmo and he venmoed me a a little bit of money and i'm like oh okay wow nice. and so thank you that guy yeah wow so yeah were you were you guys allowed were you allowed to sell merch there Brad? i could uh, my feature act sold merch okay. so i could if i wanted to which now that i think about it the fact that my feature act sold merch and that and then we were in the green room together probably defeated that whole purpose of me right. not selling merch but <laughs> yeah the, the skipping the meet and greet didn't help anybody yeah 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 no but uh yeah, yeah i sold just, merch yeah yeah uh, that, nobody it, wanted it yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I saw like, that old my old album that like most of the it's like been out for years. Yeah, yeah. and also it's CD. Oh yeah, dude. So it's like, I used know. to sell CDs, dude. bro. The craziest part was I used to bring the char- the CD uh, duplicator on the road. Oh, I had one of those yeah. three discers. Oh, nice. the three discers. Boop, boop, During boop. the day you're working, and it would yeah. say read on it. It would say read on it whenever it like started to get the disc, oh, and yeah. then you would let you would hear it heating up. I had like one that was pretty cheap, yeah. so it would heat really hot, like that in the corner. Fan- would start going yeah who knows if some of those even work oh dude <laughs> that's a that's a roll of the dice <laughs> then i would take i got them. one of your cds was blank like that happens man yeah they're I'll doing get, three at a time yeah i, mean, I pull yeah, them out early yeah, sometimes yeah, right sometimes. <laughs> i gotta have a bit i'll well, be like bro it ain't that good anyway yeah, don't worry, i'm new <laughs> yeah. bro true. you're lucky you're lucky yeah. my you're lucky. first cd is humiliating when people yeah. tell me they got that i'm like just take this new one for free yeah, yeah it's fine yeah i have your first album no you don't. dude you don't i forgot that. about that and i would go buy the the clear cases and put it in and then get the xerox and cut the freaking thing and put it in Sure. I mean, and sell them. Yeah, now it's like you just have a. Now they already have your album, or they can stream it for free. Right. Like it's hard. Like that's what sucks is because merch is a big way for comics to make money. Oh yeah, yeah. you make that extra so, two, two three hundred bucks. It's huge. It's, it's tough to like not have something to sell to them. Yeah, and, and yeah. It, it, you know, so I, 
yeah, you had to leave a lot of money on the table if you didn't sell merch. But uh, you know, it's just yeah. I, I'll I'll get to that point. And if you want to buy some Brad Williams merch, and just go just go to BradWilliamsComedy.com. Yeah, there you <laughs> go. There's the commercial. I'll send it to you. <laughs> okay. The good thing is you could probably know like okay, I'm just gonna bring thirty or forty shirt. You know, it's like I'm only gonna yeah. bring this many things because it's because so at 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 uh and where you were at Salt Lake yeah. City, it was a hundred people. Yeah, I think it was a hundred people per show. And yeah, what? me, it was like between 100 and 125 wow. per, per show. But yeah, I, I tell you what saved my life during the damn uh, pandemic was uh, being on Cameo. <laughs> <laughs> that saved oh, my really? that saved my ass because uh, uh, St. Patrick's Day happened and I said uh, and I said on my social media <laughs> that oh nice I, I will that. that I will send I will dress up as, as a leprechaun and send a message personalized to, to yeah personalized message praise I, God I, bro I made so much money. <laughs> I in, bet. In a day. That's a big day. Dude. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so, I didn't yeah, even think thank like, God. those are the best ones. Thank God yeah. for yeah. some sort of like shtick, you know, like Scott Steiner, that old wrestler. He's like, oh, his are hilarious. You send me, and I'll, I'll, I'll punk your wife. I'll do whatever you want. I'll like, run yeah. a, I'll run a, um, what is that called? Train? No. <laughs> <laughs> That's what Nick was thinking, wasn't it, Nick? <laughs> Scott Steiner. Big yeah, come on. Stuff is if that, you look dude. at the cut of promo. Well, I'm just saying, because he and his brother always did everything together. Oh, That's all I'm saying. His Him cameos and Rick, are hilarious. Know? Yeah, and so he just talks shit to these people, and it's yeah. so good. Yeah. Uh, his, and why does he dress like that's Nicki how he used to, That was his WCW kind of like gimmick when he would come out wearing that kind of stuff. if you hear me. Yeah. I miss the old, maybe the old one when he had the uh, the things on his, the wrestling thing. That's Rick, his brother. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. From, the, Wait, but from he, the University of Michigan. He always just like, yeah. kind of looked like a, just like a strong, weird collegiate wrestler with like big <laughs> yeah, hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then Rick would come out like a dog and like pee on the turnbuckle. Yeah, Rick was the, crazy, he, he man. The, there they go. Things. There they are. But then. Steiner brothers. Then that's, the, see, go to the next one, the steroids got, that's like the, look at that. Yeah, and he and, and he's like fifty. Look at those biceps. You can't <laughs> build that, a bicep like that. That That's guy so will funny. buy your breast milk right that there, man. Frightening. That is hey, frightening. Scott, if you're listening, <laughs> that guy more, makes breast milk. I got milk. <laughs> breast milk. <laughs> yeah, make that, that guy happen. serving his own stock. He's got it's so awful. He's like, oh, I don't. Uh, what is it like where you, where drug dealers like deal drugs, but then they use them sometimes? He's like high in their own dips supply, in his own man. product. <laughs> yeah, you see, like he gets high on his own Dude, supply. Hey, I've been I, doing I love, some of this. No, and he's like just all jacked. <laughs> I love how every sports league shut down and pro wrestling was like, fuck y'all. Yeah, Vince yeah. McMahon we owns gonna, it. We the are going to keep going. The dude killed a wrestler on accident <laughs> and then sued his wife for breach of contract. <laughs> <laughs> That's how evil Vince, Vince McMahon does not care at all. Give a the shit. only reason he didn't do WrestleMania in Tampa as scheduled is because yeah. the city of Tampa had to be like, hey, man, you can't. Right. He's like, they had to interfere. You can't no, do no, it. No, yeah. We're going to do he's it. He's like, we're do you know how much money this makes me? Damn it. Yeah, we're going to do it for our fans. Dude, a lot of places are, um, there's like a lot of pushback now, it seems like, because cities are saying you can do certain things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Didn't we have an article, maybe something about mm -hmm. that, Nick? There's cities saying you can do certain things, but then people are now like filing lawsuits that they just can't take it anymore. Well, something that doesn't make sense to me is like they, they've said, all right, the lockdown's going to be three more months, but also we're opening businesses. You're like, well, right. what? Yeah, truly yeah. confused. That's you see, very confusing to me. Yeah, you see some articles. Go to the article, man. This is it. Okay. Stay home uh, orders. Aimed at reducing the spread of coronavirus. We're now facing legal challenges from residents and state officials alike. One of these is pretty wild. Um, you can't really down, sue Nick. the government right now. They're already giving all their money to people <laughs> who know. are stuck at home. That's tough. But and, but I get the frustration. Like you're, you you want to make money. You you you're, you're willing to go out and make money, and then the government says no. Stay home and don't make money, and, and you're like, oh, so you're gonna pay me? Well, no, we're gonna give you like. $1, well, but it's also just right. tricky. The government isn't making the virus. Like the government's yeah. like, dude, we're trying to kind of save your ass. Like it's tricky. It's like the yeah. wrong person to Absolutely. blame. Absolutely. Well, like look at te in Texas it says the, the the attorney general warned that he could take action against the cities of Austin, San Antonio, and Dallas if they do not scale back orders that are more restrictive, and that's the attorney general. Then the the governor is moving towards yeah. reopening the state um, and said that while businesses have the freedom to reopen or remain closed, local governments do not have the option to keep them closed. California it, faces a, a dozen lawsuits that claim the state has unjustly closed down gun shops and religious services and infringed on freedoms of s speech and assembly. Yeah, what do you think about that, about a religious services? <clears throat> yeah. It's, I, I mean, think it's kind of like stand up, man. You got to go to that responsibly. Yeah, right. that's what I say. Like, if you want to go to it, then go to it. But it's just like you got, like you got to understand. That's one of my biggest things, and this is my might make you some of the listeners annoyed. 
people don't take like their own responsibility. Mm -hmm. So like right. they'll smoke for 40 years and then go, isn't it sad I have cancer? It's like, no, dude. Yeah. I Yes, <laughs> we love you, mom, but like you don't get to smoke for 40. Yeah, and yeah. they go, oh, well, I need disability because I'm a big fat lardo and I ate McDonald's 75 times in one day for the last 30 yeah, years. Yeah, no responsibility. And so it's like they all want health care, but like a lot of the health care, like you don't even take health <laughs> <Yeah>. precautions <laughs> like that's the beauty of freedom is that we get to do what we want yeah. you don't get to do what you want and then be a victim yeah. you don't get to go like well i should be able to jog through the park naked and nobody yes but that's not the reality we live in right yeah you like, can't you jog the park naked stuff's gonna happen yeah you if, eat if mcdonald's you're a things tamer, happen if, if, if you're a lion tamer for the circus and and the lion bites your arm off yes. you, you can't sue the that's circus part of it and yeah if you, and also i love that you're a lion tamer but don't cry to me when your arm gets bitten off. Yeah. And if you want to eat McDonald's 75 times, I love that. But don't cry to me about your diabetes. That's how that works. Yeah. I wonder if there's a way, though, because like it's Same always... Same with me. Actually, let's do this. Sorry, not to interrupt you. No, go you. on. If I get coronavirus tomorrow, that's my fault because I'm yeah, the stupid we idiot who's doing comedy shows. Because we win. So it's the same thing of like personal responsibility. Like right. that's on me. Yeah. It's like it, it'd be way safer if no one played professional football. Right. But these guys... It's their choice exactly. to play professional yeah, football. It's a, yeah, it's kind of that freedoms, same argument. Man. When people yeah. are always like, man, these football players keep getting hurt, but it's like, but they're playing football. Right. Like, they signed up to play football. Yeah. There was a doctor a week or, a week ago, I think, who put a picture. He's on an airplane. He's flying from New York to San Francisco, and it's a full plane. And he's like, mm -hmm. I can't believe they said that this, that, that this plane is full. You know, this is so dangerous. <clears throat> it's like him and 25 doctors. But it's like, but you're on the plane. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if yeah, you don't want to be sure, like it's just oh, yeah, yeah. It's like we want our creature comforts, but once they start to like, I don't know. I, I you agree. know what I'm saying? Kind I, of. That's the whole th road I was going down. Is like we everyone is so victimy and soft about that kind of stuff. It's so frustrating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here you go, Dr. Ethan Weiss. I guess United is relaxing your social distancing policy these days. Every seat full on this 737. Yeah, and yeah. I, but at that point, you have the opportunity if you want to get off the plane. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's you. You have the freedom to make those kind of decisions. I know that when I flew on uh, on American Airlines, there was a couple in front of me that had their that had their infant child. Like, and mm -hmm. they're and I just kept thinking to myself, why does that why does that baby have to fly right, right. now? Like, but okay, wow, yeah, that's, that's your shit. Well, and I'll even go a step further. This might like <laughs> so I would say like, oh, maybe they should have drove. You know, like mm -hmm. if, don't be on a crowded plane where we share air with other people. Yeah. Maybe they should have drove. Rent a car, drive to wherever this emergency destination is that you're taking this infant, right? And then people will say, oh, well, Jeff, what if they can't afford it? Well, they should have get a better job. They should have worked harder. <laughs> yeah. like, I, like even those things that say, well, some people can't. Well, then work hard. Just take your burden and bear it. Mm -hmm. If you're broke, get rich. If you're fat, you don't like it, lose weight. If you're yeah. fat and you're happy, great, flaunt it. What You just do whatever is working for you. Hey, hey, or, I mean, like, do better. Hey, yeah, there has to be some social re record. The, uh, yeah. There's no response. To, like, there's, we keep making it so, like, we always just keep helping the lowest common denominator, which right. in America you can be. Like, I mean, I remember I've been to India before and like they'll have handicapped people like dragging themselves on the ground because yep. they don't have a wheelchair. Sure. They don't, or like if they're lucky to get like a skateboard or something yeah. or make something like That's that, it. you know? Mm -hmm. Where it's like in the US, it's like everything, we really get catered to. We're I know. really comfortable. Mm -hmm. But they keep like catering to like, okay, somebody can, you know, not do anything their whole life, live in a bubble, you know? It's the worst. Yeah, finally oh. come out once to gun down both their parents, you he know? Was born without thumbs so you know we better send him a check every month and he's like well i can't work i got no thumbs like dude and i i learned all this like my ideologies from traveling the world and i see things and i go oh man if they can do it yeah. i was poor i lived in a car and i started doing i found a job where i didn't need a high school diploma or i didn't need to like i found a <laughs> job like, that hey, works yeah. i'm a moron so i need to find a job where yeah. morons can dude, make the money. fact that i'm rich is ridiculous <laughs> Yeah, and it makes me go just figure it out <laughs> do what you gotta do at least right. these morons with like McMillions at least they found a scam to get money like they yeah. did it that's a great doctor find something you know yeah, get well, it. do well, what you gotta do yeah it's like I can't be a professional basketball player uh, right. cause you know you have to find another I'll, way cause I'm white right <laughs> 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 I write that one down. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, but like, so I found a job where I could I could be a professional. You figure and it out. Do it. Did you, you know? ever? Did you ever think because you were a smaller person, Brad, mm -hmm. that um, in stature only, that you uh, <laughs> that you 
um, should have got like an extra f- something from the government or anything like a TLC like that? show no. or something. <laughs> like a TLC show. <laughs> Every dwarf gets a TLC show. That's all they do, dude. That's what it's gonna be like one should, day. They should just have the dwarf network. We got all. We right. got. We got the WWE network. You got like DIY There's networks. Everything. Just have the really dwarf should. network. It'd be just cool, have huh? All dwarf shows yeah. all the time. Yeah. Serious. Yeah. The only problem with those shows is they're always trying to convince that there's nothing unordinary. Right. The entire yeah. time. We're just like everyone else. Yeah. No. No, we're not. You're not like everyone else. I'm not like everyone else. The show would be super boring. Yeah. And the guy runs and jumps up into bed. <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. want to see how you how you're navigating your life because it's inspirational to know that you're reg that you're just like all of us. Yeah. Except you're dealing with something that makes you different than us, but like how you're you Yeah, know what I'm, I'm not like everybody else because yeah, uh, I have to put my bag up in the uh, up in the overhead storage bin and I gotta get fucking creative. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, black guys don't come up to me and go, Wait, hey, what's up, big man? Like, like <laughs> look at this one. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this little guy. Like that never Life happened to me. He's different. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, we do. Just- but yeah, it's like we don't make people. We don't make people like have to be better themselves. Really, you know. Mm-hmm. It's like we'll just keep making it more comfortable. Mm-hmm. We don't challenge. It doesn't seem like we challenge. Look at food. People. You know? People just eat for taste. Yeah. It's all they care about is the mouth. Le- food is to feel you. It's supposed to like make your body operate mm-hmm. at a high level if it, but we just all we care about is the taste part it'd be like filling your car up with like mountain dew just yeah. every day <laughs> and then the engine seizes and the mechanic a doctor is like uh dude have you been putting soda pop in this car <laughs> yeah. it's like yeah dude loves mountain dew <laughs> like no <laughs> this runs on fuel <laughs> And you're like, dude, it loves Mountain Dew. Like, okay, Mountain well, Dew. you're gonna have to keep coming here. Yeah, the engine's gonna have to be stripped and fixed yeah. every single time you put Mountain Dew in this thing. You're like, eh, psh, Mountain Dew is what it likes. What do you know? That's what we do with Doctor. our own bodies. We get one body in our entire life, and we just put shit in it. Yeah. And then once we get like to forty, we realize we've got you know problems, and we need pills and medication. <laughs> it's like, yeah, stupid. You've been doing it to yourself. <laughs> and we get them. That's the thing. In the U.S., we get them. I feel like I wonder if we didn't have those things like to help us. You know, like if mm-hmm. we didn't know. Right. That like there's a there's a some bailout program that's gonna be there. There's a way like if if we all went completely broke, we know there's probably a way where we're gonna get housing somehow. Sure. Mm-hmm. That we're gonna get probably able to be able to get medicine. Or our parents. Like yeah, and yeah, it doesn't make us challenge ourselves any. But I don't know how you do that. I don't know how we'll, you we'll know that like worst case scenario, you can go stay with your parents until you get back on your feet. Right. Or like worst case scenario, especially if like you're a clean person, like if you don't drink and drugs and stuff, like you'll probably have a thousand couches you can rent. Like you'll never be homeless. <laughs> right. If you can keep up like what you're doing. But people that don't have that, that's why rich kids statistically famously don't do much because they, they're like, they're comfy. They've never had to. Right. They, don't, they always know that backup's there. And that's what people might them. be doing subconsciously with their health. It's gone. Eh, they'll, they'll take care of it. Oh, yeah. I'm sure Figure I think I, I, I'm sure I've done it in my own life. You know, I, I smoked. Not a ton, but I smoked semi decently probably till about maybe two months ago now. Cigarettes? Yeah. Really? Over two months off of cigarettes. Yeah. There you go. Do but you it's like I can't blame better? it. I definitely feel better. God, it, it was the worst. Oh, you thing. have to. Yeah, that's that's the great. Like when, when, whenever I actually eat like a kale salad with very little salad dressing on it, I go, "Damn it, I I feel like a lot better." Well, even the placebo <laughs> of that of like I'm doing the right thing. Yeah. Right. I've made a good decision. Like I feel yeah. good. Like I have. Like I don't. I have can to still go it. walk. Yeah, yeah I can well, still I walk around. Smoked, you know why I never smoke cigarettes? Because I'm pretty susceptible to peer pressure. I just want to be part of the gang. You know, I want to be mm-hmm. friends. Uh, so like when everyone was smoking weed, they were always like, "Man, this is the best. Let's get like a marijuana sweatshirt. I'll wear to school. And like mm-hmm. weed's the best. Weed, oh weed, yeah, weed. yeah. And like Dr. Oh, like, Dre, we're, we're gonna go to Janine's house. We're gonna drink. You guys, we want to drink alcohol, but. Even like so, everything looks really good. You can get it. Anybody who would smoke cigarettes around me would be like, "Man, don't do this. I hate this shit, man." Like, wow, there's wow, there's <laughs> yeah. cigarette. So like, I just saw that commercial. And I was like, I'm never gonna do that. I've never seen anyone enjoy a cigarette. That's really true. <laughs> They're just sitting there going, "I can't believe I do this. Right. It's expensive. It stinks. I hate it. Don't don't ever do this. This is bad." It's so true. People are like, "Don't ever do this." <laughs> wow, they're doing it. Yeah, that was me. Oh, yeah. I'd be miserable and fucking smoking. Yeah, because yeah, no one ever does that with like good sex. No. Like. Don't do this. No, yeah, yeah. No one's ever fucking like a hot person and be like, ah, oh, I, I, this yeah. is horrible. I hate you this. You eat a sandwich and you're like, Ooh, this is the worst. Don't eat one of these later. It's like, what? Brownies you're you're like, doing it. Yeah. 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 It looks and that great. comes with the placebo of self loathing and stuff. So, like, when you're doing that, you're kind of feeling gross oh, about yeah. yourself. Like, man, I shouldn't be doing this. I said mm-hmm. I was going to quit, blah, blah, blah. So, there's the opposite effect of that kill salad psychologically. Yeah. But then, so, but then there's so, like, you know, we could, like, they have cigarettes. People can have them if they want to, right? Yeah. They're available. But do you blame, like, the government? For allowing nope. like there to be cigarettes that people can have even though they're addictive or it's free will, man. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. But yeah. just don't cry to me when you get lung cancer. 
Yeah. Yeah. Don't say it's so sad you died early, but that's you chose that. But good for you. I love that you want to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like why do we watch the dude walk across the volcano on the tightrope? Because in the back of your head, you're like, wow. I'd never. He could fall. Yeah. And also, I'd never do that. That makes him heroic to me. Yes. And then if, if 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 that dude fell in the volcano and died, would we feel bad for him? No. We'd all be like, well. Right. He, he walked across the volcano. volcano. <laughs> I always think about that with the football analogy of like, they w- I wouldn't have posters of these guys on my walls as a kid and think they're like these hero titans mm-hmm. if it was safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what makes them cooler than my dad. It's like they can like, yeah. go crush skulls and like, yeah. they're like literally like throwing footballs 50 It's yards. not like I have a poster of my stepdad Willie yeah. on my wall. Here's Uncle <laughs> Al. He got his graduate degree from... <laughs> FBW or whatever. Yeah, these he's an accountant. Are. I don't know, Done. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Look at his stats. Miss Look, Bobby. I Look how many returns he. Look how many returns he filed last year. Oh yeah. man, Silly. what a legend! That would, that would be pretty cool if they had uh, like heroic posters for just regular dudes. Yeah, man. yeah. Mr. Sensenbaugh. He's taught physical education in school for forty years. Yeah, what a Done. legend! What a legend! <laughs> what do we got in the news, Nick? Anything exciting going on? Uh, this was kind of funny. Chuck E. Cheese, because people didn't seem to be wanting to order them on some of the food delivery apps, they changed their branding. Nobody on, wanted crappy pizza. They changed their branding to Pasquale's Pizza. And trying to Ooh, pretend trying to get that like, urban market, huh? Or uh, <laughs> that Latino. <laughs> what does Pasquale's mean? Pasquale uh, is actually a number, another member of Chuck E. Cheese's rap band. Oh, I but hate no that one I knows know. that. Oh, yeah. I hate that I knew that. You knew that? <laughs> no, fuck yeah! The animatronic that. rap band. How did I also you know love that, that you. you have Pasquale. A, and then, then there's the purple one, and then the grimace. Uh, not <laughs> grimace though. And then there's the no. His, his name is Munch. Munch. We, do, when see, little people are smaller I'm right. people, when you guys Come see on. like better be Munch characters, <laughs> do you guys feel like there's like a like a sense of like you? It doesn't seem like you like. Do you know what I'm talking about, kind of? What like? Because you guys get like a lot of the same attention. I feel like as like maybe Snow White at Disneyland or like. Oh yeah. Oh dude. Like because so, all right. The, when you see characters like like Pasquale or like Chuck. Chucky. Yeah. Do you Who's feel like a sim- a, symbi- a symbiosis with them? Like, do you feel like... Kind of. I just go, well, they, they all get stared at. But no, it was funny because, like, uh, my job before I was a comic is I worked at Disneyland because I grew up in Southern California, and that's a great way for high school great to make job, money. Too. Yeah, it's fun it, job. It's great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was fun. Great place to meet Everyone's gay dudes, Everyone's happy to be too. here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're, you're not wrong. It you're a, not wrong. Bro, it is a know. really a homoerotic hotbed down there, I didn't know. Dude. It, oh, it yeah. Is very, it is that's very horrible. I go to I go to Disneyland all the time with my guy friends yeah and and no idea they're probably going hey there's one of us <laughs> <laughs> there's another gay guy right there's there. a couple Great. graduates yeah no it, it, it was fun because i got a lot i got a lot of attention from the girls that worked there because i was like one of the only straight dudes that, oh, yeah. what'd you do work there uh all right i i was not one of the seven that's not uh oh, okay i was a bodyguard for the characters it's called being a character host yeah you walk around with them and, yeah, yeah and just like make sure no well the one seven dwarfs are actually gigantic when they in the costume yeah they come out they're huge they're not they should actually hire dwarfs and then make the costume smaller <laughs> yeah That's what they should do yes mr munch i got it right nice. there he is ha the current i am a loser <laughs> current incarnation of the character is called munch's make-believe band oh it's his band you chucky the band leader <laughs> <laughs> Helen Henney, Mr. Munch, Jasper Jowls, and Pasquale. <laughs> Here's the thing. If you're going to open a, a restaurant, right, a restaurant arcade for children, yeah. why pick a rodent to be like the man? Like, that's the number one thing you don't want in a kitchen. Oh, oh yeah, I think. Stuff. For like Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, what oh, are yeah, they doing? Chuck E. Cheese. Yeah, yeah. It's a mouse. They're like, hey, he ha- Chuck he E. Cheese. Like, TMZ yeah. has a thing out for Chuck E. Cheese. Would you admit that? Nick? You <laughs> think? He is out for Chuck E. Cheese. Bu- oh, buddy, TMZ hates Chuck E. Cheese your every buddy week. Hates Chuck E. Cheese. Who is it? Your uh, body does? Oh, your buddy, man. Gianni. Gianna. Gianni hates Chuck E. Cheese, too? Uh, he, he tweeted posted something. about. It was actually kind of funny. He posted something how he hated people who were getting takeout from Chuck E. Cheese before this actually happened. One of his friends the next day dropped some off at his house, and a couple hours later, Gianni tweeted, uh, Chuck E. Cheese is better than In-N-Out. Fight wow. me. Yeah. <laughs> well, he drove Converted to Chuck E. Cheese. He like filmed it with his phone. You know how like all I skipped through most of your shit. I don't know. <laughs> but you know how all young people like that's that's what the new like YouTuber and TikTok is like them ranting in their car. Yeah. Like yeah. That, with like quick edits for some reason where like just jumps from like <laughs> up, random, but <laughs> like that's the whole video, and it's like them just like taking a hard take on like pineapple on pizza or something. <laughs> um, but that he did like a hard take on how he like. It, Chuck E. Cheese, they should all be closed. They're all creepy. The food is shitty. And he did like a whole thing. But and he did definitely did it before all this. 
Man. Yeah, they, they go after Chuck E. Cheese all the time. There's always, I remember they found a piece of scalp in one of the ball pits or something there <laughs> once. And that's what set it off. Dog. That's a big deal. Yeah. But we used to go on dates. I remember people would do like a, like I remember like if your mom and somebody else's mom that had like a cute child or something, okay. they would set you up on a little date at Chuck E. And they would oh. sit you at the other table. You'd sit at one table to parents and the kids would sit at another table. Yeah. Like a little double date kind of. I always liked their pizza. I might get Pasquale's takeout. Really? I always thought it was good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I mean, it's hard to screw up pizza, in my opinion. Maybe it's because I was eight. That's but the like, <laughs> bro, I, I have no jokes. I then. had my 34th birthday at uh, Chuck E. Cheese's in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, ah! and I could only invite five people. And Why? That, I, Why? That's the rule. That was like the amount we paid for in the package. <laughs> and um, it was. Packages. Were they a little alarmed that it was 34 year old birthday party? <laughs> well, the funny part was it would be like if they had the birthday tables, and it was like Hannah six, Jonathan four. Theo, 34. Oh, it was your family. You were yeah. family. That's and it. then the, the van would come by. I loved it, man. You know, uh, That's so, this awesome. is a, so this is a bit I do on stage, so I'm going to try to not do it as it's a bit. Mm -hmm. True story. I went to Legoland on my day off in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's just me. I was like, I, I could spend a day at Legoland. I'll just check yeah. it out. It'll look like, like I do Disneyland or something. And I was going to convince one of my guy friends to come down. And so I get there in the parking lot. I felt too weird being alone at Legoland. So I call oh, my buddy yeah. Derek. I say, hey, I'll just wait in the car until you get here. He gets there. Mm. I'm 30. I think I was 35 at the time. My buddy Derek's like 37 or something. So we meet. We go to the front gate. And they wouldn't sell us tickets to come to Chucky, to go to uh, Legoland. Really? And I said, uh, "What's wh why? And they go, because you have to have like a kid with you. And I was like, well, we don't have kids. And they're like, yeah, but we don't just let random men walk around. Respect. And I was like, what do you mean? They're like, we have adult night twice a month. And if you want to come to adult night, it's like, I'm not here for adult night. I, I'm only in town this week. I want to go to Legoland. Wow. And they were like, well, and I was like, why are you doing this? And they're like, well, because we don't want you know kidnappings we you know we're trying to prevent kid i was like well you're gonna cause a kidnapping because i'm about to go steal a kid <laughs> to get into legoland well well also like would i be the best kidnapper in the world like that kid would be so happy he's like oh this guy's great <laughs> my dad never takes me to legoland yeah. interesting now he dropped me back up at home no sex just fun yeah, exactly he didn't try to fuck me or anything <laughs> yeah now would they this let that's great now would they let two women go go into legoland with without kids we should test it i don't know because they were be pretty like weird Ooh, that's a good point because like all right because i've kind of a similar story i was uh at a mall and i they, they got those uh i think they're called busy bees it's mm -hmm. like it's like a chuck e cheese there's tubes and ball pits and shit cool. and i was in the middle of the midwest doing shows and i'm by myself i'm like you know what fuck it i can still fit in those tubes let's go yeah, that's right. let's go to busy bees so i so i start walking in there and they got like a and an employee stops me and he goes like hey do you have a do you have a kid in there? And I go, nah, I just want to go in there and like I'm small enough to run around the tubes. They go, yeah, we can't. Oh, really? We can't let you do that. I'm like, you know what? In this case, probably a good idea. Just some single white yeah. dude just walks in, just like, yeah, I want to go run around with the kids. That's so <laughs> funny. Does it feel like you a lot? You should have just went to the bathroom, shaved, and been like, I'm a kid. Man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, How you ha why are you hassling me? Like, man? oh, I'm late for school. Yeah. <laughs> Does it have you seen Peepaw? Yeah. <laughs> Does it feel a lot? Uh, <laughs> you have a shirt on that says "Grandpa's Favorite" on it. <laughs> Does it feel a lot of times like you, because of your size and stuff, that you get to relive your childhood in some instances? That fuck yes, wow, fuck yes, really, that's pretty all, cool. Think I about that, all man. That shit. Oh, there's a there. My like, favorite, give me a good one. My favorite ride is at uh, Knott's Berry Farm Camp Snoopy. It's called Huff and Puff, mm. and I could still ride that ride. My friends can't. Oh, we can't. We're too big. Too big. Look up Huff and Puff. You'll see why. It, 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 it's a train that you sit on. Oh, cool. And then you like you can like move the thing back and forth, and then that controls your speed oh, of the train. Nice. Oh, they're yeah. Gonna, they're, they're gonna pay you to like be the guy. On there that. it is. Oh, there it is. Look at that. I can still do that. It's adorable. Oh, hell yeah. It's awesome. There's Bobby Lee and his girl. <laughs> Obviously. That that it's like it's all it's always funny when I would do it because I because I because I would go to Knott's Berry Farm and just be you know I I I'd be with my friends and be like hold on I gotta go ride Huff and Puff real quick oh that's great and like do they take photos and stuff you gotta yeah. have a, there must be a photo there. yeah so 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 there's like a video somewhere of like the train going by and it's like kid that's awesome, kid Brad. kid and then Brad comes I love by and waving yeah and I bet the people love that too they're like yeah, yeah, yeah. they like, see a midget riding Huff and Puff you're like fuck like, yeah. that guy's Knott's been on forever. <laughs> He won't get off. Yeah, that guy's been on for 25 years, man. <laughs> it's awesome. I go, well, yeah, well, if, if, if I can't ride some of the roller coasters, then the payoff of that is I can still ride the kid. The yeah, that's great. Kid, the kid rides. Yeah, and then I was watching um, 
I, I, I was watching the Chicago Bulls documentary, and uh, yeah, so and good. I was hearing about how like how, like Air Jordans are costing people like one hundred and seventy five dollars, and I'm like. Oh wow, they've only cost like fifty bucks for me for like the Oh, last, that's a I didn't for, think about for that. For years. They've cost me fifty bucks. I yeah, didn't even think about I that. I wonder what <laughs> I wonder what the cost of savings is if you're a little person the overall life. Well, for that for savings. there you get savings, but then you buy like a pair of pants and then you gotta get them altered and shit like that. Oh, so yeah. or or God forbid you buy a suit. I got a couple of suits that cost me a little extra money. Oh really? Yeah, because I had to Well they to get tailor them suits anyways. I mean, so it's weird that they that must have gotten easier as you got older. Yeah. With like the internet and modern times, right? Yeah, because now there's like services. I'm sure some of them even sponsor your podcast where like you like measure your shit right. and you send it off to them. As a they, kid, and they jeans must have been a nightmare. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's horrible. Now it's like, yeah, now there's like great places that do that. Do that. Did you always, not to ask questions, I don't know not any fail. other little people except for you. <laughs> cool. Um, or different types of people that aren't. I'll be your dwarf Google. Super tall, yeah, but do you, <laughs> did do you <laughs> always know that you were, or at a certain point, did your parents sit you down and say, hey man, we have something to tell you? Oh, uh, so they told me I was a dwarf, but they told me before I went off to school because my dad, uh, my family's all tall, so uh, my dad told me, he's like, no, when you go to school, there's gonna be some kids that make fun of you because you're a dwarf. So let's you and I write some comebacks for them. Nice. So, wow. so my Good dad, school, dad. Yeah. So my dad and I wrote jokes. My dad was like, "Just stop being a pussy. Why are you crying? <laughs> yeah. Kids pick on kids. Grow up. Yeah. Yeah. So my like, so like, we we wrote jokes. So then when I went to school and kids made fun of me, I had comebacks like written. Nice. And I and I would say it to them, and then they'd get all sad, and I'd get I I got sent to the principal's office. Did you once. feel bad stealing your dad's material? <laughs> <laughs> Did you do you think that that helped make you into a comedian? That Hell sounds yeah. like exactly Hell how yeah. I would become a comedian. Yeah, I feel like. but also just being different is probably why you're. A comedian. Yeah, that too. That well, but like, but that attitude with being different, right? That's why. That's probably why I'm it's a what comic. Makes you funny. Yeah. yeah. So then when like when 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 I go to some city and some guy like yells out leprechaun, I'm like, really? Yeah. You think I haven't heard that shit before? Yeah. Let's go. Okay. Like like and 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 then I fire back at him. Like, and he's never been funny, that guy. If he's still yelling yeah. leprechaun at this age, like that <laughs> oh. guy. How sad is it, though? How sad is it as we get older when you have your friends that still tell, like, jokes that are just, like, oh. from gr or just, like, the worst, like, little comebacks or whatever? That's my biggest pet peeve. You know what the worst one is? Is when people, especially grown men mm -hmm. uh, and grown women, uh, anyone, who I'd say, over the age of 11, if you think you're funny because you're saying, like, a line from a Happy Gilmore movie yeah, or, like, you're <laughs> quoting Michael Scott from, like... <laughs> you yeah. stole a quote from a thing and now yeah. you're putting it in your own life and you think you're very funny like you you suck you're not funny at all yeah you're my boy blue somebody <laughs> yeah, keeps saying like, that uh, now yeah. yeah except this one guy who did a cool rich, video yeah. he had a friend that had drowned or something and he's like you're my boy blue and he kept fucking turning the camera to the fucking body <laughs> <laughs> Jesus how crazy is that yeah, see man? that's where that guy's sense of humor is <laughs> <laughs> no that was your blue my boy yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, you're, oh, you're blue, my boy. <laughs> oh, well, see, that's creative. Uh, 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 you twisted uh, uh, a little. Did like something that, different. Actually. That's good. <laughs> you're blue, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> and then a fish jumps out of mind his mouth. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that uh. that's like, I don't fear anything about like being a dad in terms of stuff that I'm going to do with my daughter. The mm -hmm. thing, the thing that I I I fear is like once I have to start interacting with other parents who just oh, aren't yeah. funny. And oh, then, yeah. and then no, you find, don't have to put up with that. Oh, and then they find yes, out I'm does. a comic. No, you can be polite, but like you don't have to like you don't have I mean Yeah, no, when they find out you're a comic, that's yeah. that has to be the worst. When you have a child, think about that. You have a child, so you have a, this connection piece yeah. to somebody else that has a child. So you have to mill around oh. while your children do whatever they're doing. Yeah, and lick the kids each are other. friends. Yeah. And I'm like, God, now I have to like you're friends with Sally, oh. so well, we'd have so to deal with it. He can just go jump in the ball pit and start <laughs> running around the tubes. <laughs> Dude, I can't wait for that day when me and my daughter are both running around the yeah. tubes at Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, I'm I'm gonna go back to that busy bees. Like, like, I can't I, listen to I your made friend's a kid. dad <laughs> tell bad jokes. I'm gonna jump around playing the tubes with the kids. Dude, that's hilarious. Is your man. daughter a uh, dwarf? Yes. Right. I yes. think I, yeah, I think you told me that. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh got got the Asian dwarf baby, or or as I like to call her, the uh A D B. Nice. Uh, so. Wait, were you hoping for a dwarf? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, cause, well, cause like I want I don't, I don't want my kid to grow older and get bigger than me and i gotta like yeah. discipline her <laughs> like, go to your room fuck you dad 
Well, now she's kind of on your team. There she is. You got it. Yeah, look now at she's on your team. Child. So if it comes down to like you and you know you and your wife are have you know now it's kind of like Team Dorf is yeah. dominating the house. Oh yeah, now it's like my wife can't complain if she like trips over a, st- <laughs> a step stool or something because they're like, "This is the world you're living in we now. Need, this is you. You signed up for this." <laughs> look but at. But if she uh, was like, a, if she was a average height person, yeah, it'd now be I'm her and her outlier. mom, and now you're out. Yeah. Number. Now look I'm at that smile. Is so cute, huh? Yeah. Is there another one? Oh, that's the picture behind it. That's my baby. Yeah. I there's one on the ground. Yeah, uh, and, yeah, yeah, my, yeah. My wife is Chinese, so we made an Asian dwarf baby. We and what that. are the the odds that, that she was gonna be a dwarf? Uh, fifty fifty. Wow. Yeah. So we were, you know, we were just kind of. Uh, that 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 might be my favorite one. She. Uh, oh, so cute. Someone gave her a robe with her uh with her initials on it. Some so. pet. She'll somebody. Into, oh, I know who it was. Probably somebody who tries to get into a Lego lane by themselves. That's it. <laughs> Don't put that on me. Also, uh, that person has no idea how newborn babies or dwarfs work. That's a giant robe. That's like for like a one year old, like two year old. That's the best part. Is like because like when all, all when all the pandemic stuff started happening, everyone, uh, so, so, some people started talking to me like, "Oh wow, that's gonna that's gonna <laughs> suck when like your kid outgrows her clothes." I'm like, no, we got clothes for like what two are you talking years. About? Yeah, yeah, we're hunkered down. We're good. I'm the worst of that when I buy clothes for like my nieces and nephews or something like I was like like I don't know he's like four is this fit like I'm like holding up like I'm like at Target like on it looks pretty little to me but like <laughs> you're calling over another four year old hey worse. how old are you four get over here <laughs> serious that's what it feels like my ex girlfriend was try like try this on this stuff I, was like, I don't know I don't have kids you're you want to go to Chuck E. Cheese after you're telling a four year old like hey, hey try this on try this on come out do a little turn for me Dude. let's see how it fits <laughs> <laughs> do they sell lingerie for little people no dude and they, no not for oh, little not for, people i thought you meant for children is there <laughs> no, that's my point it would be the same no it's not it's not because we got big asses and uh my type of dwarfism the girls have some big old titties wow oh, okay. really yeah so that yeah so she's gonna have to oh wow it's beautiful like, cut, you'd have to have customized lingerie yeah sometimes it's customized lingerie but i think for the most part stuff just fits because like I mean, not as much stuff fits, but there's stuff that fits. Oh, there is. Hmm. Yeah, it, yeah, it's it, it's out there. But I was gonna say that it would get a real dark world. Oh, Bronx fan, huh? Yeah, there you go. She is. She... Look, she's not a Bronx fan. <laughs> look, she's like, why'd you put me in this? She's like, I'm. I got all of the lines. I'm an LA baby. That's what she said. <laughs> um, like, is she Rams. getting to the part where she can? How you said four months? Yeah. Wow, old. yeah, I love like five, six months. They start to really kind of get interactive and stuff. Yeah, like, well, dude, like, and not not to get like too cheesy or whatever, but like when it it crushes me in the best way when I when she's when I wake her up in the morning and I walk in and she's kind of crying, but then she looks up and sees me and then mm. just gets a big smile on her face. It's the best, like that. I. Like it, it sounds stupid and cheesy and oh, I don't know, but that's Jesus. like the, that's no, it's human. Literally <laughs> the best feeling I've ever had in the world. I love wow. that. It, it, is is just my daughter like look at me and smiling. It's the best feeling I've ever had. Better than Saturday Late Show when they're like you hit all your bonuses. Ooh, <laughs> that's a good feeling. That's a pretty good feeling. Yeah. That's a damn and good feeling. And- yeah, yeah, you know, it, it, it's certain it's certain things like that, and uh, I got friends that don't have kids, and they're like, oh, so you like you change the diapers and stuff? You're like, yeah. Yeah, you do. You're like, whoa, but you like wiping shit. And you're like, yeah, yeah. Is that Adam Ray who said that? It sounds <laughs> sounded just like him. A thousand percent. Okay. No, uh, no, no. It, oh, but like, like yeah, it, it's like. So like, what are you like? Gotta go get the uh, go get the diapers and everything. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He sounded like, like a, you should give him like a marriage diaper. <laughs> I'll get it for him, Uncle Adam. <laughs> But yeah, people were like, yeah, you like 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 you clean your daughter's shit. You're like, yeah, cause I know. Because if, if you don't. They're just in their own shit, and right. you don't think about it. Also, I'm not a kid. monster. Yeah, <laughs> just l- let my wife do it, and I'm a like. Yeah, I'm a, I mean, like like this 1950s <laughs> madman dad, where I'm just in the other room with a martini. Like, yeah. how's that shit diaper, honey? Yeah. Also, Handle that it. might be the bad part of having a a, a dwarf daughter, like mm-hmm. you rooted for, because now she's gonna be like, you. Ch- if you guys get in a fight, oh, you're the dwarfs, you change her, you know? Because <laughs> now it's team dwarf. I'm so I'm big on oh. this. <laughs> There's like an average person war going on in their house at all times. <laughs> well, if something has if if something shits near me, I'm mm. going to help it out. That's where I'm at. I don't <laughs> no, care what it nice is. What? I you feel, got old parents, right? Yeah, that's true. I so, feel yeah. like, I feel, yeah, like you, I feel like you should play the more you know theme right at, right after you say that. If something shits near me, <laughs> I'm going to help it out. Which shows you a good person. Well, it's just crazy to let something shit on be running. Like, who's that? Where's that dad? You know what I'm saying? That's a horrible idea. Yeah. What else we got, Nick? Any other news? 
Uh, Brad did have a hard out at twelve. Okay. Oh yeah, but yeah. You, I, I I gotta go because my wife has an appointment. Oh yeah, that's right. And uh, and then I need to go watch the baby because nice. you can't because because you can't just put the baby in the crib and say deuces. It's yeah. not like my puppy that's sitting in a kennel right now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, you 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 guys continue. But uh, uh, do you mind do you mind if I plug some shit? No, real, let's real plug fast? it, man. Where can people check you out at? Uh, BradWilliamsComedy dot com uh, on Instagram at BradWilliamsComic Twitter uh, at Funny Brad, please check out my tour schedule because it changes almost by the week. Because like, because like things get canceled, but then other states open up, so they get added. Like, so things are changing constantly. So yeah, just go, just go to the website and book me on Cameo. Yeah, go to cameo.com slash Brad Williams comic. The best one I've had so far is uh, <laughs> one woman told me to tell her ex girlfriend that her pussy was stanky. Oh Ooh. my gosh, stanky, not stinky. She paid for someone. I guess stanky. that's good. You, and she what's the medical tell term on that? <laughs> 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 it's a stanky pussy. I think that's medical. I think you nailed it. Yeah. Just so you know, there's some real outliers out there. Yeah. So you know what? Go and book me on Cameo. I'll do it. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm not. Gonna to say a, I'm, I'm not gonna say a racial slur or anything like that but if you want me to call someone's pussy stanky yeah. i'm in <laughs> yeah yeah look for 500 dollars, you want him to dress up like uh dwayne chapman the bounty hunter oh, i want to see I'd you dressed it. up as a small scott steiner oh with I'll the do chain it. and the glasses the and you'll just do the do same <laughs> smaller gimmick bro it would be funny if for, for say like for Dwarf 300 dollars. yeah for 300 dollars, you're like i will do a small version of whatever your favorite <laughs> Yeah. So I'll do a small dog, the bunny hunter. I'll do a smaller. Dude, so great. You'll make a million dollars. Vaginitis, it's called, or trichomoniasis. Wow. That's what the women can have. Whatever and it is, ladies. I, you put whatever word you want on it. Get it fixed. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Tomato, potato. I don't Vaginitis. care what you call it. Trichomoniasis. Right. Uh, I'm Brad Williams. Baby. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Congratulations on the, uh, the four month old. Thank you for having me. Yeah, man, you bet. Love you, brother. Hey. Good to see you, man. Miss you. Yeah, this will go up tonight, okay? Oh, tonight? Yeah. Awesome. Cool. This is a tough wall to have to change. Um, you know, like it's not like at the comedy store where they just put your name and cursive on the wall. Yeah. For this, you gotta you want to add someone, you want to take someone away. That's quite a thing. Yeah. Well, we had a we have a guy who makes it who does animation that helps us out. Or we don't have a guy like I'm, but we have a guy who does some awesome animation that we know. This guy Papio Tune, and so he drew this one time, kind of based on the Simpsons characters. Kind of. <laughs> and is it very much so? I have no idea. I'm not a big 1, Simpsons guy. 1,000%. Yeah. But, uh, okay, cool. So then, yeah, then then we just blew it up and put it on here. It's so good. Yeah, it's pretty cool, man. It's, been, it's definitely been something that people like to see. Um, well, yeah, man, it's just so crazy. You guys went out there and got into it. I love it. I was excited. I wanted to get out there, man. Like, they could have said, the, uh, like I said, the money is the tricky part. Yeah. But I think if you did it, or if like I think Joe Rogan's gonna go to the gonna go to Wise Guys. That's what the the rumor is around there. Keith Stubbs, the owner, was like, "Yeah, Joe's gonna go." And I was like, "Well, what are you gonna do? Just make it like a hundred dollars a ticket, but they're still limit it to like the hundred people." Right. And he's like, "Yeah, something like that. We'll probably just make the tickets forty bucks or something like that, and put a hundred people in here." I was like, "Wow, huh? Yeah, yeah. I guess there's certainly ways to do it. Like, um, it's not, also it should be noted. Like, it wasn't like I sought it out." Like, I, I didn't go, like, hey, someone booked me. The offer came through, and I was like, really? What, does Utah not have news? Like, how does this work? Yeah. And then I was just like, sure. I guess I'll just say yes the way I always do. Well, I was in Utah a few weeks ago. We went uh, camping in southern Utah. Nice. Or Beautiful. So Ute. A lot of people call it So Ute. But <laughs> they had, um, we went to restaurants and stuff. So Ute. We went and ate in restaurants. I went to a gay bar after the show because it was, it was like the closest bar that was open. Yeah, sure, buddy. <laughs> 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 the, old, oh, the old distance gay yeah, trip. Yeah, you know, I'm I've on foot, that. you know, so I got to go to the gay one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah my car we wouldn't start, so. But it was sucked, man. We went into the bar, and it was just like a, a restaurant. Like, they're like, oh, you have to sit at a table. You can't go anywhere. You have to stay with your people. And if you need to go to the bathroom or something, you get up, but you got to put your mask on. And I was like, well, this isn't a bar. Yeah. Uh, what I like about bars, you can walk around, talk to people and stuff. Like, yeah, yeah, you can get your ass kicked yeah. by someone you don't know. It's fun. Yeah, you I miss the old bars. You don't drink anymore, right? Uh uh. Right. But Not you right still now. will go to a bar? Oh yeah, I'll go. Yeah. Socialize. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, I think it's fun sometimes. What I don't like I notice that I start to not like is when people especially women, but if somebody's really wasted. Oh yeah, yeah. Just like that gets it uh, irritating real Especially fast. if you're not drinking. That shit is a, such a curveball. Uh what's this guy's name? I'm trying to think of this name of this guy. Is a comedian and I should know his name, I'm just blanking on it. He's like uh Gay Jimmy, is it that guy? It doesn't matter. Was, anyways, he don't drink. And he's like, gay <laughs> Jimmy. Oh, I thought you were going the other way. Drinks a lot. <laughs> no, no. 
Oh, yeah, Jimmy, he can, Jimmy, he's a real sipper. No, there's a guy who doesn't drink, and he opened for me, and he was, I was like, do you still want to come out with us afterwards? He goes, yeah, I, still, I just I just won't drink. I was like, okay, perfect. Yeah. So we go out, and he left because he was so annoyed with how hammered the girl was that I was talking to. Oh. He was, he was just like, I couldn't even be around her. Like, I was just so embarrassed for her and so annoyed. And I was like, if Jeff can put up with this, he can put up with it. But I'm at it. Yeah. And I was like, man, I've never even thought about that. It's kind of like one of the perks of being the being drunk, too. It's like you just yeah, it's like, one of the perks of being drunk. You don't drunk. even notice that everyone else is Yeah, blurry. it makes you judgmental. That's one thing I don't like a little bit. It definitely adds a level of like kind of like what I think comes off to other people as judgment. So now I'm like, if people are drunk somewhere, you yeah. know, and you're not, and you're like, oh, man. Uh, this girl's way like I, I just can't communicate with this person, you know. Because yeah. yeah, if you'd have had two drinks, you'd probably be fine talking to him, you know. That's weird. Um, I, when I heard you stop drinking, I was like, I, I considered it. I actually considered for the first time in my life not drinking. Really? Yeah. Because Jordan Peterson always talks about that all the time. Yeah. He's like a big on all that stuff, and but then I was just like, I don't think I can, which might mean I have a problem. I don't know. I don't wonder. If, I, I don't know. I don't. I mean, we don't cross paths a ton, so I don't know if I've ever seen you. So I don't know. There's a couple yeah. of guys where it's like you're like, oh, this dude. It's a problem. Yeah, this yeah. guy's way. I just, I'm always drunk. having fun, and I like, I, and I don't have a wife or girlfriend or kids or anything, so like, it doesn't affect. Like, I mean, that's never yeah. negatively affected that. You're probably fine. Yeah, I you're feel probably great. doing good. Yeah, yeah. I I go to yoga every day after like the next day, sweat it all out, and you know, I don't it sounds know. like you're having a fucking blast. Is yeah, what it sounds like. it's a great life. But yeah. also like uh, that does make me when when guys I admire, I'm like, oh man, they stopped. Maybe I don't know. Maybe I should stop. Yeah, I think sometimes it's like, yeah, you start to think, is there like insider trade? Like, am I, yeah. would it help me? Like, might I start it, working more? Am I going to like start like uh, organizing things? Like, uh, I'll knock out seven podcasts in a day because I had so much, I didn't sleep in until 10 30 or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Do you feel more productive? I think I have over the past few years. Yeah. I think that I have. But then sometimes I start to think that I get too much, like, um, that you get a little bit disconnected from the fun sometimes. You feel that way? Yeah, I think there is a level of that. Like you get a little disconnected from like the every man. Like, uh, um, but you don't waste as much time. Like you wouldn't spend time with like some drunk chick. Like yeah, like uh, like just little things like that. I feel like you save time in. Okay. Like if somebody's like, hey, let's go do this, and if you were drunk, you would go do it, and it's just the fucking worst idea. Right. But it's when you're sober, you're like, oh, I can see that's horrible idea <laughs> yeah you know well i feel like the the idea that the fear of not fear of missing out but like the fear of like it's not a fear you feel like you're missing out on some of the fun i feel like every comic goes through that uh, and maybe it's because of social media maybe it's because whatever like i can't like i've had conversations with eric griffin i mean the people on this wall who when they look through the scope of what they're looking through they're scrolling through going oh man uh, you know look at theo and uh and uh what's the fighter guy you know uh, Dustin Poirier. Oh, Brendan. Yeah, Brendan. Let's you see that and you go. Oh man, I've never. Yeah, you know, they're like they look like they're having a good time. Look at them laughing. And I mean, I've never been on that. Like you do feel kind of like these, like left out. Like everyone feels that, and I think that like that no one's left out, but everyone is feeling that about each other. And I think that's like a stand-up comedy thing. Uh, yeah, I could see that. We can't work together. You're a headliner. I'm right. a headliner. What are we gonna do? Some weird double hour show with no openers? Like, so because I'm watching you go have fun doing something, I'm thinking, oh man, I've never played that. That'd be yeah. So That's we're we're point. forced to kind of be like separate in these things, and then occasionally you'll see like all of these guys together in Montreal, and you're like, why well, didn't go to Montreal this year, man? Look, I'm missing out. You know, like, wow, that's. And then you feel it on a smaller scale too. You'll be like at Montreal, and you see like. Uh, to you know, Chad Daniels will walk away with you know some other comic, and they'll be like, "Where he's going?" They go, "Oh, we got tickets to go see Chappelle," and you're like, "Well, I didn't." So this is just a human thing, I think, of just feeling left out. Yeah, it's such a comedian thing. You're not missing anything. Yeah, and especially with social media now, it's like there's always an advertisement for what somebody else is doing, yeah. no matter what it is. So yeah, easily you could scroll, scroll, scroll through and see seventy thing of feeling bad. You, and you know? can't be at any of them. Yeah, how could that hot dog? Can't, can't be, be at, at all that of that things. carnival. Yeah. Can't be at the. You know, they're out there riding dune carts or whatever. Can't <laughs> yeah. do it. Oh, I should have been out in the mountains hiking yeah. right now. Like the way in the they're hospital. doing it. Oh, lucky fuck, you know. I saw a girl I haven't talked to in years. And we never, like, we just worked together on a TV show. It wasn't like we weren't, like, together. She had a boyfriend. Now they're married. They have a kid. I haven't talked to that girl in easily two years. We haven't worked together. We didn't text. Nothing. I saw her, her husband, their, like, baby, and then another family. And they're, like, jeeping up in, like, Joshua Tree. Mm. And I felt left out on that. Damn. Oh, they should have included me. A uh, two cute families that are like out. Like, of course they didn't include. Why would? They? But my initial brain went. Oh man, that pff, I'm left out. Come on, man, I should have been there. 
yeah there is this whole i think yeah i think that it's just i wonder what the long-term psychological effects of that are yeah of that fomo you know that thing where you constantly see things that you could be doing you know yeah. that people you know are doing and they always appear to be joyful yeah i, I can only imagine the long-term psychological effects that aren't really good because what are we supposed to do you can't beat all those things yeah it's impossible man like i have to like coach my brain all the time like you don't have to be jealous of these people they're your friends you should be happy for them relax oh yeah you know like that whole comic thing where you see oh, someone yeah. do like something and you're like well i should have that i gotta do and you're that like, well too. why did i think about me why couldn't i just say hey good for that comic you know <laughs> Dude, what about this? This is the last thing I want to uh, think about real quick is, do you see a lot, I see a lot of these commercials and it's like, let's go, uh, thank you to our first responders. Thank you to our, um, you know, our frontline workers and stuff like that. But then sometimes at a certain point, I'm seeing like even friends of mine put up videos where, like we took all this food to the hospital and literally on the video, you could see the hospital is inundated with food. Like, oh, and yeah. they're like, every day we get this every day. And it's like, and I'm not saying it's not good. I'm not right. saying we shouldn't always do nice things for other people. But sometimes it, ju it just starts to feel like who, what is all this? It's not like it's the military. You're, you know, there's like tons right. of people out in the street and you have to, half the hospitals are empty. I'm like, what are they? I understand if you're buying lunch and doing something nice for these people. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the frontline workers, it seems like, are like Postmates or people that are, you know, Amazon. Yeah, well, that, that's the thing. This U.S. Is, mail. I agree with that. Pizza, pizza delivery people, like maybe not now as much as when this first started, when we went in like real scary lockdown, oh, where like people are just a mystery of not knowing. Pizza people were like pizza delivery guys were like saving people's lives. Oh yeah, like the I Postman, mean, like that movie, The Postman. There's lots of people with. They, yeah. I'm like, are you Kevin Costner? <laughs> yeah. And the guy's like, Nah, dude. Think I'm about Hector. And they're risking their lives coming to people's houses. I mean, at that time we didn't know. And they're just giving people that have no groceries or anything like like that's I don't know I think that's I think it's heroic yeah but not now yeah well it's, sometimes it <laughs> it's just seems now. like a, I guess sometimes you just see people it just seems like a advertise like a thing like look at me being kind oh but I, I guess that's that. okay I guess you're just creating kindness so I don't think no I don't think I don't think you're wrong it does feel weird to boast about it like look we made a hundred of these masks and we're gonna go do drop them off today it's like kind of this braggadocious kind of. Look how good we are. But it's them just staying busy. Yeah. And also, I think there's a lot of positive, but I see what you're saying. One time I was with a group and we were in... Uh, People can't just do a nice thing anymore. They got to get the credit for it. Yeah, it's tough. Um, it's just a human thing, I think, that we're like that. I was in Barbados one time and we had a group and we're taking... They're like, let's let's take a, a day and take toothbrushes over to this youth facility that where they don't have them, you know? It's so nice. So we took them over there. And the kids didn't give a fuck. They all had iPhones and shit. Oh, that's like, we have hilarious. fucking toothbrushes, dude. We don't give a fuck, bro. That's really, really funny. And then I just felt like a fucking idiot. I guess we should have brought iPads yeah. or something. I don't know what. That's really like, funny. I some guys that. literally put me on a Snapchat like, look at these motherfuckers, dude. <laughs> Thinking we don't brush our teeth. These buster pussies brought us toothbrushes, man. <laughs> Too uh, much. You um, should have brought Sonicares. Yeah, that's what I should have done. Those are real pieces of shit. <laughs> um, Jeff Dye, thanks so much for being thanks here. For having me, dude. Uh, where can people check you out at, man? All things at Jeff Dye. Just the big whirly A, you know, at, and then Jeff Dye. J-E-F-F-D-Y-E. -F -F yeah. Um, where, where are you performing next? Do you have a spot yet? I'm doing LOL Comedy Club in San Antonio next. Nice. I think next weekend. I love San Antonio. Yeah, I'm excited. It's going to be fun. Hopefully by then some of the bars will be a little bit more open and stuff like that. That's what I'm hoping that this is, I don't know. Loosening I'm, I'm things up. That's what I'm hoping. But, I mean, maybe not. Maybe we'll go back. I'm also going to do some virtual shows in between there just to make some money, just so I can do start working on some stuff yeah uh, i also have a podcast called jeff dies friendship podcast oh yeah that's which right is on all is this on all you things tape comedy? tonight monday night don't you uh yeah well usually i have a bunch backlogged oh nice yeah which are great it's a good feeling but the um <laughs> yeah that's been really fun because i get to do stuff like this like yeah, i was watching some clips great. yesterday of it it's fun i'm trying to think i can't remember what interview it was uh because there's some people that they're not going to just come hang out with you but like if you have them for an hour they'll sit down and say yeah like brian kyle has got like a wife and kids he's like a grown man he's not can't tell his wife i'm gonna go have a beer with jeff die yeah she can be like what but if he's like no we're gonna go record a podcast like he's like yeah then i have an hour with brian kyle you know? it really is kind of a unique way that guys get out of the house <laughs> yeah um or make friends with people that's why i call it the friendship podcast because like you literally get to like just say hey i admire what you're doing i read your book that's great you want to come be on my podcast so it's like a productive way of having a hang yeah i love it i love it and i love that you had me on so thank you oh gang man thanks for coming through jeff die ladies and gentlemen must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's going
gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine. 